Welcome everyone to In Your House. It's a party tonight. This is the Joe Cronin Show review of NXT TakeOver. In your friggin' house. Io Shirai, the women's NXT world champion. Pretty much thought that was the way things were gonna go when no other belts changed hands and um, things went the way they did. We are here. It is a party in the chat room. If you're new, you better hit that subscribe button because people are peeing their pants right now in the chat. Everybody hit that like button right now. We got Jake DeMarco coming. He's coming to the show, baby. He's coming on the show. Jake DeMarco in your house 2020. I'm Joe Cronin. We'll be right back in just a second. Hit that like button and stick the thumb directly up my When Raw, Raw, SmackDown, WWE, or AEWN, tune in to The Joe Cronin Show. Live, live, live on YouTube for review and reaction. Joe Cronin and Jake break down all the action. All of it. The Joe Cronin Show, your source for wrestling opinions, news, and insanity. A wrestling podcast with attitude. Mature audiences only. Woo! Join our community of over 70,000 people. Subscribe free on YouTube to The Joe Cronin Show. I want to thank Black Lab. He is the king of the asteroids. Last night, or Friday night, rather, I monetized this. Black Lab became the asteroid. The asteroid named after Black Lab. This is your NXT TakeOver review live on the Joe Cronin Show. We are going to put out the Discord link for all of you in just a minute. You guys will be able to call in. You guys will be able to talk. And we'll have a good time. Let's see here. Jake DeMarco, are you sexy? Sexy and ready to go, baby. How you doing? All right, man. I can hear you. It's good. It's working. What was that? Maybe not. <laughs> awesome. We can hear the audio. We can hear the sounds. Oh, yeah. It's always now, a good thing. Now you can hear the audio. Because uh, Discord now has video. Everybody. Discord now has video like Skype, so we're able to do things a whole lot better over there. Um, and, you know, at some point later, I'll take calls, regular phone calls. But if you do want to get on the show before that, uh, we will give out the Discord link to you guys. Remember, if you're a VIP on Patreon, you guys will have the gold membership link. What's up to Gorilla Strong? Five out of ten from Gorilla Strong. There's your Discord link in the chat. Spammed it a little bit. Go check it out. Hit that link. Do all that stuff. Well, you know, I had this show at about a six out of ten until that main event that main event got better and better and better and so i'm gonna i'm gonna ramp it up a little bit to a uh, 6.5 so i'm gonna <laughs> go 6.5 yeah i was at like a 5.5 myself and it went up to a six with the main event so we're, we're a half a point off there are you giving it i'm giving it a six i was at a 5.5 5. all right there you go i was i was gonna give it a six myself and uh yeah i went up a little bit because just because I, I was so depressed by everything else, man. Like, I thought that, that like, that they needed the theme. Because without the theme, like, this really felt like a Wednesday night show that they just put on. Like, a regular, like, Wednesday night wrestling yeah. show. It didn't quite feel like it had that that big pay-per-view takeover vibe. But, uh, you know, uh, giving it a 6.5, I think that there's only been... I don't know. Maybe there's been one other show that's been that low for me on an NXT. This was one of the lowest ever, and I don't. Yeah, I don't had one be lower than that. I mean, they've all pretty much hit that stride of a seven or higher. Right. And I don't want to blame COVID either for this because WrestleMania I enjoyed more than the show tonight, and that had no audience. So I don't want to blame that, you know, entirely. Yeah. I know it's difficult to have robots cheering, but. It, it still didn't take away from the event at all. Yeah, it didn't help that there was not a big crowd. The, the little bit of a crowd did help, though. It makes a difference when there's some kind of noise 
some kind yeah, of sound. Just feed off of crowd energy. Right. And and something, just some kind of reaction. Without a reaction, it feels wrong. It feels really wrong. Even just some smattering of claps sounds a lot better than it would have. What's up, chat? Absolutely. How's the chat doing? You guys wet? Hit that like button, man. What's going on, everybody? Hey, super chats are coming in. If you guys want a super chat, you can do the super chat down below. But if you want, uh, you guys can use Streamlabs in the description box down below. And uh, the, all the donation amounts are listed in the description box. If you go all the way to the bottom, all the amounts are listed for you. If you guys want to um, uh, donate to the show tonight, uh, feel free to do that. NXT TakeOver 2020. I'm big down there, just so you know. No, I'm not. I've got six inches. Todd, first of all, Todd Bet Pettengale returning. How about that? I mean, we've been that calling for it. That was a great intro from him. And throughout the night, you know, the 1-900 gags and... Uh, being on the AOL chat with DX, th those things actually made me chuckle. So thumbs up for those little vignettes and bringing him back. The little bit of nostalgia helped out a lot. I mean, it was cool to see some of that. Some of it was sort of like half-assed, just dumb, like the Ico Pro thing almost. They could have almost done funnier stuff to me. but They, they could have, but, but I don't feel like it hurt it at all. It certainly added, it elevated my score, certainly having the theme tonight. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Someone said they had a better wrestling match with their D earlier. I don't want to. I don't <laughs> want to say the word yet because I don't want to get you know taken shadow banned yet. You know I don't want to quite go, go down, <laughs> go missing yet. So Todd Pettengale, yeah. the voice as good as always. This guy has one of the best radio voices, and he was able to convert it into that visual announcer. And in it's not even like my favorite time in WWE, but it was a nice time. And but it was during the time when things were at their lowest. When you so even though we're we're having this nostalgia flashback, I it's great nostalgia for me. We were about ten years old or eleven years old, ten, eleven, and twelve years old when Todd Pettengale, at least I was, when Todd Pettengale was doing all this the announcing and stuff like that. And I remember at that time thinking, man, I miss Mean Gene and all those guys. But Todd Pettengale's good, and. Who would think that that would be a throwback? A throwback to a time when yeah. WWE was at its worst. He really worst. did have a smooth transition into the WWF then as well. Like you know, he really assimilated well to that role. He fit in right from radio into you know backstage and in the position. You know, it, it worked well, and he was always a, a shining star of that that mid '90s time. You know, '95 ish mm -hmm. around there. So. I, I was glad that they actually used the set as well. That was fun to see again. Yeah, and it added to some of the entrances. I was worried how if it would look silly with people, you know. With, I like that they utilized the key to the house and the ring doorbell. The for ring Gargano's. doorbell, dude, that was funny. That that was that was very that well thought up. out. And having the key lock the door, be the one to gouge the eyes. That was a very good story, you know, in terms of set and production. Um, I I did not care for at all the dnxt championship match unfortunately that back lot brawl was a waste to me they they really dropped the ball with that one i was actually surprised as well i, I don't it was like too, very dark it didn't feel right um i thought it would have been better if they just had a like i don't know maybe it was the lighting but if they I just thought almost nothing of what they did was very impactful. I'll never remember yes, that. That's exactly the word. There was nothing impactful, nothing lasting, nothing memorable. Um, that, that was the huge problem. The pacing, as I said to a few people I was speaking with before, the pacing was very, very slow. The internal structural time felt like it was at a crawl at some moments. You're just watching people on the ground moan and recover, and then the same thing time and time again. So... Um, having the Undisputed Era show up and, you know, the flashing of the lights, that's the distraction for him not to attack on the ladder. Felt silly. A lot of the, the moments like that made both competitors look like doofuses, really. Right. And it, it was just an unfortunate way to, to, to have your champion retain. It, it just wasn't entertaining, sadly. Yeah, it wasn't a very good thing. I liked that it was in the middle, kind of middle end of the show. It was something different to look at. But execution wise it's it didn't feel fluid there was nothing that i would get into i thought they could have done i think it would have been better if it was shot with one or two cameras only and they kind of shot it like a backstage fight and, and instead it was kind of filmed weird I, it just didn't work out for me i don't know it, it, maybe it was me um i think a lot of people in the chat are agreeing with this too i'm surprised you know i thought maybe some people would like this even more even though we were 
not as happy with it tonight. But great job on the theme and that sort of thing, doing something different, special, I guess. But yeah, Adam Cole and Velveteen Dreams match, unfortunately, was not the nothing that helped anybody. And it was lame, and I they could have done so much better. Let's go to the donations and what you guys are saying. Love to hear from you guys via donations tonight, and I appreciate the support as always. And if you're in the chat, I want you right now on your tablet, on your phone, on your Xbox controller, on your PC, on your desktop, on your laptop. I want you to put one hand on your private parts and the other hand in the chat room, and I want you to give me your rating for tonight's NXT TakeOver in your house, baby, as Ric Flair on the WWE Network lands with that NWA world title. I don't know why I'm watching that. But anyway, here comes the donation. Super Chat Party. Sup, Joe. Sup, Jake. You sexy beasts. Hope you and all the chat are happy, healthy, smart, safe, sane, and secure night. What's up? Also, Dream can go to main event. Do you think that that's what it is, man? You really think that they would bring the Dream up? I feel like they want him to have an NXT run first, right? For quite a bit, we've been hearing that they wanted to bring him up. So, You think that that's what it is, then? I think because now he can't challenge for the title anymore. They added that stipulation. So I think that's a way to write him off. My God. They they want people, you know, Matt Riddle is already going up. Yeah. We've heard that Dijakovic is going up to Raw either this week or next week. I mean, that's happening soon. There's a lot of people being moved up in a, a, an effort to help the ratings and to have more people that they can hopefully rely on. So. Well, if you guys want to join the discussion with us on Discord tonight, you guys can plop Do in the Discord. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. There's the Discord link. TSS. I, I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest. I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Here we go. Honestly, this event was my first NXT show in months. They underwhelming 6 out of 10. James Mesner going with a 6 out of 10 as well. James, I'm, I'm right there with you, man. James, you're dead on. I, I'm giving it a 6.5. I'm giving a little extra credit for the theme and for the main event getting better, I guess. I'm going to give them extra credit, give it a 6.5. But, um, but then again, you know, even some of their other shows that we've given, only a few NXT takeovers have ever gone below a 7 for us. I think there was a couple that, that did 6.5s. And I can't remember getting a 6.5, and I think there was always a 7. I mean, you might be right, I'm sure, but it just, in, in my mind, it feels like they've always been so stellar. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, they they have been really good at other times, no doubt about it. Um, That's why I was a bit apprehensive to come in here and not shit on this, but be a bit disgruntled and displeased and, and not thrilled with the outcome um, You know that we received. Not, I, I wasn't you know being outright negative. I was looking forward to this show, so... Honestly, I think it's just a lot to do with how they, they handled their timing and structure of things. Even the Keith Lee match, even though it's a short night, it just felt like that was a bit too long. It picked up, and then it died out again, and then it picked back up. So, I mean, I know you have to have these roller coaster esque moments, but I felt the lulls were a bit too long at points. And going by the, the chat's rating as well, a lot, a lot of sixes, sevens, so it kind of seems to be, you know, everyone's in agreement. Yeah, I, I think if you fell between a 5 and a 7.5 tonight, you're probably right on. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, sh I'm a little bit shocked at, at how I thought we would get a 7.5 to an 8 or something like that tonight. I did not expect, looking at the chat and some of their uh, reviews here, scrolling through the chat, and certainly Jeff Rowe coming in with a $10. We'll talk about his donation when it comes in. Thank you, guys for the uh, donations so many more if you guys want to become members down below you can become members get the icons all that stuff if you'd like to hit that like button man let's see if we can get the goal tonight is two million likes all right so we really need two million likes tonight let's like really make that happen because otherwise i'm going to be angry at my whole family so let's let's not mess that up man let's not mess it up tonight here on the nxt review um so first off the stage the look pretty good I, about what I envisioned it to look like. I like the Todd Pettengale thing. I, the little Ico Pro things and shots were cool. Problem is, again, I think they felt a little bit rushed. I think they could have done even more with it. Like, had, like, ridiculous over-the-top, like, weightlifting in the back or something. I thought that could have been really funny. And, <laughs> yeah, that would have been good. And it would have been even funnier if they'd been able to get Lex Luger to wheel in a wheelchair to be like, that's not how you do it. Or, or if they had gotten Lex Luger at his home to cut a promo and be like, Ico Pro. And then he like looks down at his wheelchair, and then he looks up and goes, "Well, okay, it didn't work." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, I would have died. Well, I would have died. 
Oh my god. There's always next time, you know. Dude, oh my god, dude. I would have lost my mind. Uh that would have been so can you imagine if they had a shot of like Luger in the wheelchair and he was like <laughs> Ico Pro and then he was like didn't uh, it didn't work. And yeah, like I would, oh my god, dude. I would have I would I mean they'd never do that. Then they hit I mean, his music. That's yeah, it. then they hit his music. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I mean, we would have laughed more than any other wrestling fans out there because of the joke that we have going with that. Oh yeah, absolutely. But still, that would have been hilarious. Hey, real quick, let's um let's bring in a caller, man, a person on Discord, and shout out to all the VIP ten dollar patrons on Discord with the yellow VIP. I see you. Uh Fort Wayne. What's up, Fort? I uh, put you on, but you got to unmute your mic. Probably muted or something like that. Well, he's not ready. We'll see when he's ready. He'll pop in. And when there he's ready, go. he'll pop in. Wet it up, Wayne. All right. Well, while we wait for Wayne, let's go back to another uh, donation real quick, and then we'll get back to some more of this NXT in your house, the flashback, the classic look. <laughs> Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Love female Asians. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you on that. I mean, there's nothing. Hell yeah, I mean, almost every single one of them too. Even the, <laughs> even the mangled looking people like are look look good to me. You, you know? just have that uniqueness. Yeah, I don't know what it is, man, but you got to be pretty. You got to be pretty fugly, and it, you got to be pretty fugly for me not to like you if you're an Asian person. I don't know what that is. Why? Like with certain other women, I have a certain standard and a look, but just about any Asian will do for me. Uh, they're all pretty to me. Uh, almost, you know, get, unless you get one of those big Buddha mother, uh, the, um, the best match of the night, uh, well, Fort Wayne, let's go to Fort Wayne. He's ready. Yo, Fort, what's up? What's up, man? How you doing, dude? How's it going? We're going over to the discord calls. Let's see if it goes any better than the Skype usually goes. Yeah. Uh, in my personal opinion, I thought the best match was, uh, Keith Lee versus, uh, Giant Gargano. Yeah. It feels like that that's a lot of people's favorite. I'm having trouble now. I I, I think I almost liked the women's match the best at the end. Oh, yeah, I, that was good, too. It wasn't... As, as far as, like, actual wrestling, I, I would probably agree that, you know, Champa, uh, that match, didn't have everything that you usually get from him, but the story they told, I think that was my absolute favorite match because they're, they're really, you know, putting a rocket on Cross's ass. The entrance looked great with the set for, you know, him and Scarlet coming out. So that was cool as well. Right. I don't know why. For some reason, I just kind of like, like, ah, it's kind of there. Same thing with like the backlot bra. And I was like, you know, uh, sorry, Cena and Guerrero did it, uh, did it better. It's kind of funny because if you hear Todd Phillips, it's like, I'm getting Cena and Guerrero vibes in this. It was nowhere near as good as that. That's hilarious. Dude, when they do that, they really discredit shit. Like that is the Absolutely. dumbest stuff when they do that. Yeah, Eddie would be ashamed, you know. It's like, no, nah, man, that's not it at all. Yeah, like, I <laughs> Try mean, and be your own thing. Don't try and, you know, I, I know this is a, a night of nostalgia, but you're trying to put your own twist on it, not, you know, just be a carbon copy. Exactly. It was It was also noticeable, obviously, when Nigel's not there, man. It really could have used Nigel tonight, too, man. Look at Moyo. He's, he's, he might have caved in that left ankle. Absolutely, Nigel. His, his throat might have been snapped in half. He might, have, he might have trouble breathing, Moro. Instead, we got the fucking repeating, you know, and that's because of COVID, right? Nigel can't get out of the UK or something. Is is that the is that what we've all agreed upon? I don't even know. I thought that was the case. I hope that that's the case because Phillips is, yeah. I mean, Nigel is great. Nigel McGinnis is great. Um, They, they didn't have him reading the uh, Albert Hayes uh, spot, too, because he said promotional... Oh. They went to all the. They even started the show with the old uh, for over fifty years, the Revolutionary Force, but it was over five years, and I thought that was funny. <laughs> it was a little Lord goofy. Lord Alfred Hayes, huh? The classic right there. Lord Alfred Hayes, man. I remember. Um, <laughs> I remember as a kid, I didn't even know. I was like, I wonder if he's been a wrestler before, or where this Lord Alfred Hayes came from on Coliseum Video. It was great. Uh, yes, went to <laughs> WrestleMania one on VHS. Yeah, see, that's a better accent. I did a horrible one. That was a great one. That was very Lord Alfred Hayes. Like, he was very British. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was good. That was really good, man. And you're young. What are you, younger? How old are you? 19. What? Yep. 19? Yeah. And you know that about Lord Alfred Hayes? That's nuts. You should, like, pat yourself on the back. It's pretty epic. Like, what the hell? Do that right now. Uh, I know my history. 
That's crazy. I mean, like, even when I was a kid, like, Lord Alfred Hayes, I was like, who's this cheesy old guy? Like, oh, well, whatever. And the fact that you know that and even knew the accent, like, that's crazy. Yeah, give uh, Fort Wayne some love in the chat. Um, but, yeah, anything yeah, else? Yeah, the people uh, saying Nigel's gone, he's furloughed. That's what we're saying, though. The reason that he's not there is because of the transport back and forth due to COVID issues. So oh. and they can't use him. They just they furloughed him. Oh, but yeah. they didn't let him go just to let him go. It was it was like they, they let go of the other producers because they're not on the road. So Bullfrog, you know you're banned from the show, you idiot. He's like, put me on the show. He's been does, he's been on the on hold. Forever. Does he not know he yeah. did he mismonetize this where he got banned? I know that it got deleted by Tommy's friend Mark Harder, but um, you Ridiculous. know, did he miss it? I think I think he thinks it was just monetize this, not the rest of the show. I actually don't know what it was exactly. It might have just been monetized. Now we can't this. go back and check. I'll find yeah, well no, I have it recorded. I'll find out oh, what thank it God. is. I'll find out if it's just monetized this or if it's everything. I quite I can't quite remember what our Wording. I thought it was everything, but yeah, yeah. In the chat, a lot of people saying a lot of things. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. It's it's out of control. Shout out to DJ Scandalous. What's up, brother? All right, let's play another. Donation. Glad that Charlotte, Super you know, lost Super the Jack. match. Yeah. Really broken nose, eye socket, and concussion bet. Dude, I mean, okay, so yeah, we didn't really talk about that yet. Big Matt, Big Matt, thank you for coming in with the donation. Yeah, dude, Io Shirai, dude, crushed her head, dude, on that last shot. That was insane. Yeah. Ow. That was oh. like a Joey Styles moment. Like, remember when Sabu, when he was on top of the Raw sign and he flipped off of it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so like Joey Styles would be like, oh my God, Sabu. Yeah. That's exactly what it was like, dude. It was like that. And she came crashing down on her head. Luckily, Uriah's head was up. So her head was lifted up and off the mat. So she didn't get crushed. But yeah, yeah. she got, she got waffled, dude. That wasn't, that's not the way you want to do that one. But it's okay. It was one of those. It actually looked really good, though. So even if she's actually kind of hurt, that's one of those things where it was still worked the right way. So even though she got the wrong end of it, it looked really good. It's not like when Nia botches something and she almost kills somebody and it looks bad. This yeah. looked good. Or she does actually kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, she that's coming soon if they don't figure that out. So, um, you know, not, to, you know, I'm not going to be one of these fire. Nia and then people. she, she laughs about it on social media though. That's the sad part. She, when she knocked the ropes over, she posted a, you know, the, the velvet ropes they had. She's like, Oh, the ropes will be gone for two to four or four to six weeks. You know, trying to make a joke out of her injuring people. And I'm like, you're, you're such a just inferior person to be that salty. I wonder My if they God. tell her to do that or she really is just an idiot piece of crap. I don't know. She should be I'm like part of the APA or something. Yeah, she should be She's a manager. Very, uh, full of pride. So it seems like she would she would think her shit smells like roses. Yeah, you got to oh, give yeah. it up for Black Lab, who on Friday night monetized this over on my other channel, Corrupted Nation. He We named the asteroid coming near Earth after Black Lab because he won the oh, wheel yeah, this week. Isn't he good? Um, yo, Fort Wayne, but uh, yeah, anything else you want to say real quick before I let you go? Uh. No, it's just uh, it's been a uh, great, you know, talking to you guys, and um, I honestly give the pay per view a somewhat of an eight, at least for the ma uh, for those matches that I said. An eight? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Damn. Unfortunately, I mean, if we could just pick and choose a few, I'd be with you there too. But you know, with the rest taking it down, I I'm still <laughs> comfortable with a six. Yeah, I'm going six point five. I'm a little bit more down on it, but what I will and say like, is at uh, least. Too, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Go ahead. No, I just meant that at least I felt I never felt bored or angry about the show. I just kind of felt like, oh, I kind of missed, but I was entertained somewhat, even though. Yeah, and and that's the thing. It wasn't frustrating. It wasn't one of those nights where they give you the most, you know, the utmost ridiculous booking decisions. It was just lackluster. It, it wasn't anything memorable or special. TSS had said, you know, oh, look at that. It's it's the lowest. Uh, NXT takeover yet and I was like yeah sadly that that seems to be the case I think the only other one we were harsh on really was NXT Portland and see I I'm I am a little bit worried about my score because even that I feel like there's I feel like even in another NXT because of the crowd and there was probably at least one awesome match at every other NXT tonight it didn't really feel like there was one just over the top match but I think like you said part of the problem was the not having that full crowd so they really needed to deliver on like a nine or eight show, and then maybe they would have still gotten a seven because the no full crowd. And instead, they sort of came in with a, you know, with a six or yeah, seven. They didn't come in blazing. They were just 
loaded with farts. But they tried stuff, and so like I really appreciate they, that they tried things and they shot things. Yeah, a no way. doubt. That's yeah. why I said I, I'm not trying to be, you know, totally condescending and down on everything because I I didn't, you know, I wasn't totally uh, hung up on on the results or anything like that. But the women's opening was solid. It wasn't again anything. Uh, you know, mind bendingly amazing, but it had some really cool moments. And, you know, we, we got, uh, I feel the right team won in the faces the other day. I was all messed up because I didn't see NXT yet Wednesday night when we did the AEW review. Right. And I had read the women that were going to be participating in the match, but I, it was all squished together on my screen. So I thought Candice was on Shotzi's team and Mia Yim was on the other team. So I was like, that's weird. That, Cause I even said like, Oh, they're mixing up the faces and the heels, but mm -hmm. I wonder why they did it like that. Yeah, no, I'm just an idiot. They can't read. So yeah, I, uh, and I never, Shotzi, I never caught Maya, it either. You know, I didn't even correct did. it. I didn't correct yeah. you. I was like, Oh <laughs> I don't yeah. Think okay. you picked up on it either. I just, I know. I just basically like when someone else leads with something, I just immediately think, Oh, I was wrong. I don't even think to say, but Jake, that are you serious? Let me go take a look. I didn't even think to say that. I was like, oh, I'm I the whole I'm just wrong. I <laughs> yeah, usually I'm more careful, but but uh, I just hadn't seen the yeah. Granted. No, but it's fine. You know, we, but either I'm way, it wasn't a good was match. Wrong. It was it wasn't good. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. Like it was not good. It had a, it had a few good moments. You know, the Molly go round was was funny and yeah. The, um, I'm trying to think. Uh, you know, the, the the ending with the shiniest wizard looked really, really good. So, oh, um, I think it was who's the girl Dakota Kai? Is that who it is? The bad one. She yeah. sold. She sold it really well. Like she sold that. Yeah, she. Great job. She always it. looks fantastic when she gets hit. You know, they, with that those wizard. two, Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai, they need to do more. I mean, these two girls, that their match this year is still one of my favorite matches of the year. This year, their chemistry and selling. And commitment is so good. It's different than the other girls. A lot of the girls look kind of like flimsy, if that makes any sense. Like they don't look like 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 it's the difference between how Bret Hart looked and like John Morrison looks. Like Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, John Morrison. Like, and I like John Morrison. Let me just say I like the guy. But John Morrison kind of has this paper man aspect to him that doesn't seem believable sometimes to me. Um Shawn Michaels. Not even a sense of confidence either. It, no, it's, it's just more, fluidity. It's, it's the way swagger. It's just an ability. It's the way you look in the ring. It's it's how how hard you look like you're being hit and hitting. And Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart were different, but they both had that stiffness, and they it felt like a body was flying around, you know. And I think that these two girls have that, and a lot of the other girls do not have that. They feel like like Io Shirai when she does flips and stuff, she kind of looks like Lita. And I was never a big fan of how Lita looked like that, too. It looked like she was really landing on people. And did she, she didn't move like a wrestler. She more had this acrobatic air assault, which was good. And I like, I do like Lita. But I was, ne but then I used to think, I want an Alundra Blaze, not, a, not what's going on here. They look flimsy. They look small. They didn't look like they were really, could be wrestling in the ring. But Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox really pull it off. They look like wrestlers. They look like they're really wrestling out there. So I don't know exactly know what that is or exactly what I'm trying to say to you right now, but I'm just saying those two girls look like real wrestlers in the ring. A lot of other people don't or oversell or, or miss time things or look goofy. Um, even Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley looks pretty good, but Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai are money right now. I don't know what they're doing, but it's money. They've um, been phenomenal working together since their feud you know, happened at War Games. So. Yeah. I don't know, man. They just something about them. Um, we'll, we'll try to get. But you it was guys. a very short match. It was, yeah. you know, it, it pretty much. I think it was ten minutes start start to finish, bell to bell. So, um, then then I did laugh. I said, CM Punk must be pissed that now they got the ice cream sandwiches back out from Good Humor. Right. They should have put uh, and everybody that they're using to advertise. They have four people on the bars. They've got that I saw so far: Macho Man, John Cena, Roman Reigns, and Becky. So it's like, yeah, one out of the three ain't bad. <laughs> you know, Roman's <laughs> the only one still wrestling. So, yeah, exactly. It's, it's kind of fun right now. He's away. So technically you're over four. <laughs> yeah. And he's gone and, and they're like mad at him yeah, and he's stuff. Pregnant, Hollywood and machos in the, uh, the ring in the sky. So, um, I want to shout out a Wandy for getting back up on the Patreon. Thank you to a Wandy for coming back to the Patreon. Carlos nine nineteen for coming back to the Patreon Ray Rods going to the $10 VIP plus um, Drew Bar. 
Drew Barr going from the $25 producer level tier. He went up to the $30 spot. There's no spot there. He just went to $30. So thanks to Drew Barr for the little bit of an increase on Patreon, man. And uh, we will have all the patrons uh, shout it out in a few minutes. What did you guys think of NXT in your house? I put the Discord link in below. You can call us or donate. We'll play some donations with your reaction Super to the pay-per-view and give ours. That show was barely above Peace Paul. Yikes, not good uh, from um, Drew Bar 100. Drew Bar was not happy with it. I was watching him tonight in the chat, and Drew Bar was not a happy camper about the show. Do a little show basketball tonight. dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Go ahead. NXT needs the audience back. And either this year or next year, Charlotte gonna win either Universal Championship or WWE Championship. Oh my God, Elliot, ten dollars. Thank you, Elliot. Oh my God, you think they're gonna have Charlotte win the men's title, the real title, the main title? She said she wanted to win a men's belt in a recent interview, and that's been going around like wildfire. So that's spreading faster than herpes. Oh, good God. I hope that's not the case because they give everything Charlotte wants, you know, and you can't say that's not the case. Look at look at how many times people have been squandered or held back for Charlotte. Oh my I can God. the only the only way selfishly in my marked out mind that they had Charlotte lose tonight, you know, and, and drop the belt to EO in a in a clean way was that they'd go ahead and be like, Oh, but you'll get the IC belt in a few months. You'll beat Daniel Bryan, don't you worry. Oh yeah. Picture or Nakamura. <laughs> she you know, beats like Daniel Bryan. Imagine Charlotte beats Daniel Bryan for the Intercontinental Championship. And Nakamura, Sami Zayn, and a triple, you know, <laughs> handicap match. Oh my match. god, dude, I'll freak out. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I, sure. If it's done right, it could be okay. But that is very concerning. Super concerning. Victory. Oh my god, is that concerning? I mean, it is too bad, man. We. Oh my God! By the way, um, I have a video. Said, uh, she's got the male genitalia, so that's half the battle. Oh no, that's what are you? That's that's terrible. Um, so let's start off. So first match, man, I would give that first women's match tonight about a, I don't know, a six or five out of ten. It wasn't very. It was kind of sloppy. They had a lot of sloppy issues in that match. Like it wasn't very well done. That opening uh, triple threat. As far as I'm concerned, yeah, no, you're you're not wrong. There was even uh, at one point in time, who was it? Um, oh no, Christ! I'm trying to look back my my notes here now. Uh, oh, all you the know, women in the match. We, yeah, it was uh, Gonzalez. She caught Shotzi when she went for that dive. If she didn't catch her. She probably would have been dead. Would have broken her neck. So good on her for that one. There was a few moments like that where you're like, oh wow, they they narrowly escaped an injury right then and there. <laughs> Yeah. So luckily. Yeah, it was close. They, they were a little bit all over the place. Um, but, you know, I mean, that, that happens. Shotzi Blackheart, Tegan Knox, Mia Yam versus uh, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Raquel Gonzalez. A little bit sloppy. Probably a 6 out of 10 for me. Um, I think a lot of what was going on in my head was how the set looked, the fact that it was in your house, all the nostalgia. So the nostalgia and the excitement of that, of seeing that brought back – kind of carried the match for me because the match wasn't very good but like it was okay enough because of all that hype that I had so I was like all right and then by the end of the match I was like all right that wasn't very good then we get to um uh Finn Balor and Damian Priest how did you feel about that match I liked it I I did enjoy it but I got pretty held back mentally with all the no selling from priest after a while i felt that that was a bit much and you know it was a pretty pretty close to stellar match for the most part but the no selling really got to me and i know that's what they try and do big guy little guy you know set up with these matches but i just didn't feel like you know finn balor is that much smaller you're not talking you know marco stunt and big show it, it, but that's how they made it feel at times like balor's throwing in a lot of this offense and priest is just yeah, he's just brushing it off. So that went ahead and, and troubled me a little bit. But um, a lot of the offense, it, it was it was pretty much run of the mill from both of them until we saw the super choke slam from the top. And had Priest been a little bit faster with the pin, I think he could have gotten the victory there. But I, I 
you know, did like the end. You get the coup de grace for the victory. Typical Finn Balor showing. Uh, this felt more like an NXT takeover match, though, than the match that opened the show. Yeah, that that felt. Um, they did. It felt like we we're on pace for a real match because yeah, the open the women's opener felt like a Wednesday night match, and Damian Priest and Finn Balor felt like that that could, should open the show. Um, best thing in the whole match to me was the moment where he uh, almost razored edge him off the apron, and then instead Damian Priest went back first into the steel steps. That was crazy. Yeah, that was that was a pretty pretty badass spot. Nothing felt fluid to me again, though. It was very just dis- dis- it just discombobulated. There was nothing that connected for me in it. So I'd probably go back and watch that again because it looks so horrific. But there wasn't anything about it that made me want to see that match again. Unfortunately, that's the way it goes with a lot of Finn Balor matches to me. I got what they were doing with the story of Finn Balor and whatever else. But His um, return just feels underwhelming. Since he's gotten back, I, I actually had this conversation with quite a few people today because yeah. NXT was showing the greatest matches of you know all takeovers, and you watch him and Samoa Joe, and you see these, these you know shining examples of damn near close to perfection. And since he's returned to NXT, I mean, it's better than what he was doing on the main roster, granted, but still not not anywhere near what I think we could be getting out of Finn. Plus, Trailbound said before, and he made a great point, you know, they call it the Razor's Edge, obviously, going after Razor's move. Why not call it the Crucifix or something more aligned? You know, he's, his name is Damian Priest, <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, you figure that would be just a, a, a little gripe like, there, but it's so you true. Mean like, you mean about the razor's edge? Yeah. Call it the yeah. Call it like thy will be done or something. It's something, you know, but just um, you figure it better fit with the gimmick. <laughs> well, they probably don't want to say crucifix. They, they don't even like saying crucifix anymore. So crucifixion, like that would be like, oh, like they don't like that. I mean, I like it. I like I like crucifixion or that. Didn't they doesn't doesn't Seamus call it something like that? He is the Celtic cross. Is that what it's called though? Because he does the razor's edge, and they call it something. Is that what I it's called? His was the Celtic cross. Maybe I'm. Someone in the chat will let us know for sure. But I wonder. I mean, razor's edge sounds great because that was razor's name for it and everything. And I mean, you called the. I mean, I you know, yeah. I just I don't know anymore about what to say about what they should call. This like, is more just commentary, like, less to do with the match. Like you know, you, you, you can't change the name of the stunner, but you can you can maybe change the name of the razor's edge. But maybe not. I mean, you know, I mean. You can never change the name of a tombstone, really. You know, I don't think so. I, you know, so it's... That's a tough one, man. I'd have to think more about that. But I, I did think about it during the show. I was like, oh, that's funny. They're calling it the Razor's Edge. But I never thought I hate that or to call it something else. But I do wonder, but I don't know yet how I feel. And in the end, it's probably overthinking it anyway. But anyway, the match, this match was forgettable to me. I thought this was another 6.5 out of 10. It was okay. It was nice. Seven, maybe? I, I I'd know. give it a seven out of ten. It, it, it was more NXT caliber that we're used to, but still, it, like you said, it's 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 more of a predictable Balor match. It follows that structure, you know? You get into a set pattern with the sling, ba- uh, the sling blade leading to the finish, you know? It, it kind of had that, that, that sense of old. Yeah. It's the classic Balor, like, here's the five moves. Doesn't yeah, it's unfortunate, especially when you know him and others are capable of so much more. Yeah. Um, and, and again, that's the thing, too. You wonder how much is, like, tonight, and, and other people have said this as well, how much is on the talent versus how much is just them trying to rush through a show with, you know, all right, it's got to be pre-taped. They're limited in, in not just the fans, but production, staff, all these things. So I, I try and give them benefit of the doubt. I understand it's still a pandemic. But I felt like I had said earlier, WrestleMania was was better than tonight. So you're right. Yeah, I yeah. thought I thought I thought I think you're right. I think I like and especially with them pre-taping the backlot brawl. <laughs> there was so much more they could have done with it. And you don't have to make everything cinematic. You don't have to make everything look like it's a movie. They could have done a, a straight up brawl in the back and been so much more effective than the silly convoluted crap we got with you know people driving up in the spot with the ladder and it's just you know a lot of it was was just unenjoyable the crazy thing about this show is we loved the card we loved the card and we love a lot of these wrestlers like we're so into you know the velveteen dream adam cole keith lee um you know a lot of the women wrestlers here you know so that we're into all these people 
it just didn't quite deliver into that realm that that normally an NXT takeover can deliver into. And I think that Owens and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, like you said, that was a better match than anything tonight. So this was going to fall below the ball, you know, below the bar of whatever we gave Mania, a seven. You know, we gave it some, or one night we gave it a seven. The other night it was lower because the second night wasn't as good, but the first night was um, pretty well done. So, yeah. you know, anyway, let's go back to the donations, see what you guys are saying. Guys, if you're in the chat and you want, hit that like button. What do you guys think about tonight's uh, WWE NXT in your house? Leave a comment down below. And let us know or leave a comment in the live chat. I see super chats are coming in. If you don't want to do super chat, in the description box is Streamlabs Twitch Alerts. You can click that, use PayPal. And way down below, if you expand the description box, there's a list of a ton of different donation alerts. And we can really F up this uh, this night with some crazy crap uh, d coming in. If you'd like to, feel free to do that. But I also want to shout out James Mesner. He is the top donator with $10 so far coming in on the stream he's going to take home right now that jcs digital championship uh title tonight and it has lots of stains on it from you know what and it's not page it's re it's really it's from me i did it to the belt super chat party here comes spaz phoenix nxt needs to establish b pay-per-views if this was a b show and we knew that we'd look at it differently cole versus stream sucked ho NXT uh, does. Uh, yeah, maybe they can. Um, Cole vs. Dream sucked. Uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I am shocked at how how that match fell flat, uh, Spaz, and how it look, didn't look right to me. It didn't look anything like I thought it was going to look like. I like that the announcing was done over it. That was good. I was like, okay, good. They're doing that now. We asked for that. Um, but it just didn't look right, and nothing they did was that I don't know, man. It was almost like they really didn't want to eclipse the women's main event or something like that. And that really hurt it. I thought it didn't, it just didn't look right, man. Spaz Phoenix. Thank you, Spaz. None of our predictions really hit. I mean, the, the match outcomes mostly did, but the vibe of how the show was going to go, I couldn't have predicted it was going to be fall this flat. No, um, not at all. I thought that they were really going to try and pull out some special things. It's on a Sunday, not a Saturday. They're going after more of the main roster, you know, audience, the, the Raw and SmackDown by doing it on a different day. Uh, you know, just I thought they were going to put all their, their eggs in this basket and really try and put their best foot forward, but doesn't doesn't feel that way, unfortunately. Yeah, they dropped it. And, and I don't want to be harsh on NXT. I usually yeah. look forward to these NXT pay-per-views. I like the takeovers, but I do see what Spaz is saying. If they're going to have these type of lesser shows, then maybe they should have smaller pay-per-views, you know, two hours that they do in between the takeovers if they feel like they need to get some things done. Yeah, um, it was sad, man. I, Bullfrog, I don't know why you're... I don't I don't know why Bullfrog thinks he's going to be on. I don't know Bullfrog. I got to find out if you can come on other shows besides monetize this. But Bullfrog just, you know, I'm sure I'm sure somebody else who, uh, somewhere will take my leftovers like they do with everything. They'll take you so with open arms. Somebody will take you as their leftovers somewhere else. I'm sure Bullfrog, uh, you know, well, I'm sure the uh, the the Pepsi and the Burger King of the world will will find you. <laughs> Go start your um, own theater camp. Uh, yes. Um, you're welcome, everybody. I, I create the stars, and uh, we line them up for you, uh, WCW, WWF style. Um, another Hogan, Macho Man, Roddy Piper. You know what I mean? Bullfrog. I mean, I'll look, though, man. If you can come on other shows, man, then cool, but I don't know. I need our own city in Philly. With gritty, yo, this whole city with gritty. Yo, we might eat our own city. Yeah. Good show emo. Ain't watched NXT since last takeover so I didn't know what was going on as far as storylines went. Surprised Camper got fed to the new guy in such a dominant fashion though. Charlotte will be champ again before Survivor Series. Um, aggressive urinator. Thank you, aggressive urinator, for the eight dollars. Ocho coming in. 
I don't remember 100%, Jake, but I do think that we, I know that we, I think we definitely both picked Champa to lose. Yep. I think we were, I, I know. We pretty I, much knew I what was happening. we agreed for predictions. And we, I, I'm pretty sure we thought, like, Cross is going to mangle. I don't know if we were so convinced that it was going to be such a squash. I can't remember. I, I thought it would be more, even faster, honestly, than what yeah, we Yeah, because so. we really thought, we didn't say, I don't think we said it was going to be a squash, but we did say, listen, Cross and Champa, this is here to pass the torch type of deal. This is here to make you go, wow, that guy just demolished Champa. Holy shit, this guy's crazy. That's what that was. Yeah, and, so, and, and what a huge rub indeed. Yeah, so, that's that's you know, what we Champa said. Champa did a great thing by putting him over and even got a little bit of offense in there, but the storytelling was was really, really good, and it was fun to watch. I, I had almost forgotten about it at that point. I'm like, wow, we got the women's already, and, you know, uh, that – you know, the, the toss cross, whatever he calls it at the end. The toss you know, the cross, cross what? I'm Todd Pettengale, <laughs> and this is In Your House. Um, no, I'm sorry. He just came on he, the He reversed the fairy tale ending, and it, it, it was like a <laughs> Brock Lesnar F5 looking, you know, moment, and then you put him in the cross jacket, and I was like, damn, he's passed out. That was a great, great way to, you know, you don't have to tap him out, nothing. Just been there, done that, done. Fantastic. By the way, cheap plug, just to remind everybody, last night was Corrupted Podcast on Patreon. If you didn't hear it, we had Drew on, but we also had Famous B in the house from Lucha Underground. Famous B for a couple hours on Corrupted. Famous B was also on Monetize This. Plenty of stuff to hear from that for free on YouTube and on the two-hour Monetize This bonus show. That's up on Patreon as well. Plus, the other night on Corrupted and the other night on Corrupted, Famous B was talking about the wrestling reviewers he hates the most and the ones he likes. It was hilarious to listen to it. Um, check it out on Corrupted uh, Podcast on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Download the app on your phone. Go give it a listen later. Download it. Now, when you go to Patreon, you have the option of listening to the shows via YouTube link, a private YouTube link, or you guys can download the audio of any show I do or podcast I do over 30 hours of bonus content a month on Patreon that you don't get on YouTube. And that's so because a long time you guys are supporting on Patreon with money just for just to support. But now there's a shitload of content on there too that you guys can listen to and you can download it in audio. It's been that way for a couple of years now. Anyway, all my other shows, it's on there. Check it out. Want to plug it. It was good. It was fun. And uh it made Jake DeMarco uh, freeze in his pants. So <laughs> What what so we didn't really get I guess we talked about Keith Lee a little bit we love Keith Lee, you know we love I, I I actually like Gargano now I, I wasn't sold on his heel stuff I've changed my mind now now I'm I'm okay with it it's still a little weird but it's better than it was, um I love the hockey ch body check into the boards finally somebody did something like that I thought that was yeah great. that was great I was like oh there Joe's gonna pop for that yeah bring back hockey. I just I just love the psychology in this match focusing on you know the the, the injured digits of his fingers and, um, you know, working the knee and, and just, just so much than the eyes keep going after his vision, attacking him with the key, the things we said before about them attacking each other as, as you know, Johnny's going to get away. He's like, forget this. I'm not getting my ass kicked. And then, Oh, look at that. He, uh, can't get out cause he can't find the key and gets his face bashed into the front of the set. You know, there was, there was a lot of things that worked well here. I felt it was a bit too long. It was 20 minutes and I, I believe 30 seconds altogether. So that was my well, timing on it. It just, for a match that went that long, it didn't connect. Yes, yes. It felt like two matches in one, almost. It was nice and it was okay. And I'm glad it was kind of long in a way because that probably made it a little better. But maybe not. Maybe a 15 minutes or, or 12 minutes would have been better. But yeah, it just didn't, they didn't quite nail it. Uh, it was good, but it wasn't anything crazy again it was um yeah i don't know i it felt like just about everything else tonight that didn't quite nail it for me it yeah was just whatever the set looked more it wasn't important. wasn't bad wasn't awful there was a few moments that were really good that i did enjoy from this compared to other matches um you know I, like i said i like when they, they add psychology and and because it really Keith Lee should just dominate and destroy Gargano no problem again you know big guy small guy David and Goliath type setup it should be just been there, done that, over. 
that's not the case though because they they allowed all of the build to this match to successfully and and, and you know intelligently attack and go after the weaknesses that Keith Lee showed so Gargano really had the upper hand here and they focused on that and with focusing on something like that it added more intrigue to the match there was a lot of good counters and back and forths, and, and that's what added more tension. Had we had a, a larger <laughs> crowd capacity to really get into those ooh and ah type moments, mm -hmm. I think we would have walked away a bit more pleased with this match, honestly. Yeah, I kind of came out of it just being like, I like the doorknob, the doorbell thing. That was cool. And I like the uh, checking of the boards thing as well. That was cool. And I just sort of felt that way about it. But it was good. Just wasn't um, what I thought. They, I thought they could have had an eight or a nine, and I didn't. I didn't get that here tonight. Um, and then kind of how every other match uh, turned out as well. You know, kind of felt like, wow, I'm really glowing right now. What is on the screen? I'm like super glowing right now. Let's go back to the donations, <laughs> see what you guys are saying. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, we're live after every single WWE event mostly, um, NXT, AEW, whatever it is. More content is coming, I promise, wrestling related. I think that's something a lot of people have really wanted Aside from just being live every time something's over, people want a little more content in the day, podcasts and stuff like that. So I'm going to deliver on that coming up. Go back to that for you guys. Plus, I do a ton of content that's not wrestling related. So if you want more from me about comedy or life or the world or whatever, Corrupted Nation, that's my other YouTube channel, plus Evil Spectrum 3, that's my gaming channel. Twitch, I'm on Twitch. I'm live on Twitch a lot. Patreon, all that stuff and here and everything and blah, 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 blah. And I want you guys to have things to listen to when you're at work, in the day, driving, or whatever the hell it is. And um, my personal podcast, also on Patreon, and my other one that's free on iTunes and everywhere else, Joe Cronin Show, and the new one, Meant to Offend. That's one on Spotify as well. So much shit, dude. I have so much content. You guys look it all up. Find it all in the description box. Follow me on Facebook, Instagrams, Twitter, everywhere, at JCS Commentary on Twitter. City. Here he is again. It's gritty. It's gritty. So city. We're gritty. Yo, we mighty. Oh. Oh. And I'm wearing an AEW shirt doing an NXT. I'm an asshole. I'm sorry. We're gritty. We're gritty. It's getting big. We can survive off our motherfucking own PCs. We're gritty. We're gritty. Pretty good show tonight, seven tenths. Not great, but pretty good. All of the nostalgic stuff was great. Cole and Dream could have been better. Gargano and Lee was great. Wish Gargano could have won. Io deserves <coughs> to win. She's the best women's wrestler on the roster. I was happy with that, um, Lips McGee. What up, Lips McGee? And by the way, for you, Lipsy, we're going to the Cran. We're going to the oh, Cran. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but no, we're going to the crayon. Yeah. That just scared the crayon out of me. I don't know, dude. I'm I'm drinking my wife's period blood. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh no, but so it was it was yeah, I like the idea with Io Shirai. I like her winning. I thought that was good. Um we really thought that you know, that she was gonna take the pin from somebody, to be honest, and they went the other way with it. And how about Rhea being in the figure eight or whatever, figure four, figure I think it was a figure four, and then then EO comes crashing down on her and fucking gets the pin. I thought that was an interesting ending. It was, uh, I didn't expect that. So Yeah, I certainly didn't either. Yeah, I thought it was good. Thanks for subscribing. Um, McConnell7, uh, becoming a new subscriber here on the Joe Cronin Show, here with my buddy Jake DeMarco. You can find us on Twitter, at JCS Commentary, my new Twitter account since I'm banned for life, and Jake is at Countdown Ended. Which is, it's basically he wants to be nuked. That's it. Just bring it on already, baby. End <laughs> yeah. it. He wants us all to be nuked. More donations rolling in from you guys. Thank you guys seriously very much for supporting uh, my channel the way you do guys with the donations. And for the people wondering, the top donator so far is, I believe, the top donation coming in is from James Mesner early $10. Beat that, become the JCS Digital Champion, and grow a pecker down below. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Super chat. Super chat. Commentary was awful. AU Don 2 was better six tenths. Mike Amelto. Mike Amelto. Thank you very much. Uh, six out of ten. Comment I didn't think it was awful, but it wasn't. It's not as good without Nigel and. Um, Shut up and bend Moro. over. Oh, no. 
finish it. Yeah, you want to finish oh it? Oh my god, don't finish it. Please don't finish it. I'm going to finish oh, yeah. it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, fuck you. Oh my god. Stick it in. Oh, stick. Oh, gurgle, gurgle. Oh my god. Oh, gurgle, gurgle, gurgle. It's Rybot. This was probably one of the worst PPVS that NXT has had. <coughs> Loved the theme set but the main event pretty much saved this PPV because I felt it was only a 4 but it bumped it up to 6 tenths. They really dropped the ball on the rest of the card tonight. Yeah, you know, I hate to say it, Soundwave92, but I think you're right, dude. I mean, yeah. I, I, I was worried coming in here thinking like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, getting shit for kind of coming no. down hard on this, but... I guess I'm glad to know, you know, all in all, we're not alone. Yeah, we're not alone, man. A lot of you guys thought the same thing. I mean, I, dude, I think Hakushi and Bret Hart's opening match at the first in your house was probably better than most of the matches we saw tonight. That, if not would, all that of would probably be better than, yeah, that would, that would, I'd take that over everything we got tonight. And that's, so that's not good. You know, you don't, you, you want a, at least one match to beat the original in your house, don't you? I mean, 25 years ago, yeah. Uh, and, and, and I like what Kyle said too. He's like, NXT for all its talent, it feels like it's missing something. I don't know what exactly, maybe a mega star. And I could see that kind of being a valid, you know, comment. The thing is, maybe it isn't just a valid star. It could just be the lack of a, a normal audience reaction to cause that feeling though you feel yes. like no one is a uh, uh, larger than life being because there's no larger than life reaction like i said it was so shocking to see the face johnny gargano get booed out of the building at nxt you know 25 last year and and to see adam cole get revered like he was a king among peasants it was it was incredible the reaction he received as the heel so and for him to win the title that night he's had it for the year now you know, that, that kind of reaction made him, in my mind, a legit, you know, star. So not having that tonight, I think, also makes the show feel less special. Yeah, something's missing, man. There's mania something. is mania, and I think we had really low expectations. And two, we didn't know what we were to expect with those low expectations because we hadn't had a, a COVID-related <laughs> pay-per-view done before, so it was kind of a first in many realms. Plus, it was <laughs> WrestleMania, so I mean, going into that, that that had a lot going for it. Tonight, they needed a uh, they needed to be rescued, and it just didn't happen. Lowered expectations. <laughs> um, I like long walks on the beach and keeping ladies' feet all nice and pretty in my basement. That's where I, I used to love those on that, Mad TV. That's where I came up with. Um, the date videos I made oh, on my old channel back in 2008 on YouTube. I made these um, dating on demand parodies of because there was this. <laughs> I did the burn, beep, burn, 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 beep, and then I was like, yeah, I'd love to rub your toes and like eat your box. <laughs> hey, I love to eat your box and rub your toes and I uh, love to eat your eggs out or whatever. Just I'd take a girl any age, you know? And then, like, I'm like, some girl, yeah. somebody whispered. For number oh, uh, 95, over. press pound two now. Yeah, uh, you know? <laughs> I'll do over 18. I mean, yeah. No, it was, it, yeah, it was like, um, it was a parody of, of dating on demand, but it was with the idea of the Mad TV's lowered expectations. I love that. And, yeah, I remember four of them were, four of them went up on YouTube, and one of them actually got, um, age restricted and the only one that ga got age restricted was where i played a gay guy and i'm like i'm like <laughs> why figure. why is this one age restricted that was back when youtube didn't like gay people now it's the opposite if you were to make fun of that you would be taken it's it's youtube yeah. is the opposite way they used to be speaking they, of they that flip positions no virtue signal but um no but, no not at all but but Happy uh, Gay Pride Month to everybody who's gay out there, man. To all my gay friends, I get to share the month of June with you because my birthday is at the end of the month as I am a water sign. And uh, so happy Gay Pride to all the gay people out there. But I'm not going to virtue signal, you know, just saying hi to you. Uh, here's, a, here's another donation coming in. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshippers. You're damn right. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of you. Go ahead and ride Pace. again. Go ahead and ride. I got a shotgun. What up, Joe? This is the first what time up? in a year I watch a full wrestling PPV show. It was all right. I like the Keith Lee match and the main event. Triple threat Shari was lit. Man, I'll say a 7.5 out of 10. Jeffro to boss, man. I'm glad you watched, Jeffro. Um, yeah, welcome back, man. I, I get you. You're a little excited for it. You know, I think we've seen so much good that this takes a step back. But when you took time off coming back to this... 
I could see you giving it more of a positive review. I think we're being a little hard maybe on Keith Lee and Gargano, but it just didn't stick right for me. And I just, I got to say it, I can't deny it. Um, but it was good. It was good. Nothing was bad. Nothing was really bad. The only thing that stuck out as kind of bad to me was the Dream and Cole. That fell flat as hell, and the women were sloppy in the opening match. Other than that, and not sloppy like that. I wish it was like that. Um, but it was, um, it is what it is, man. They all did, nobody did horrible. I just wasn't, I was shocked that the women, or rather that the Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream match went down that way. I, I really thought that that was a, a, a dud. I, I thought that was going to be the high, one of the highlights of the night. And, um, I don't know. It was just, something was not right about that. I liked what they did in front of all the shops, I guess. That all sounded, the Uber. Right. Moment. The Uber the, was funny. You know, the, that was okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't hate that. It kind of made me laugh. Someone called for an Uber, and and <laughs> I think it was more like, oh, it must have been <laughs> Adam Cole calling for an Uber to try and get away. Right. I I I don't like it when people always try and run away from matches consistently like that. You know, he was going to drive away, and I did like the the introduction. You know, we saw uh, Dream looking like Lucille, well, or bringing well, out Jake, Lucille, Jake, looking like Negan. Let me pause you real quick. That's where you need a heel announcer. Because when somebody says something like that, it would have been great if there was a heel announcer to be like, you idiot, you think he's running away? Obviously, he's got something set up somewhere for Velveteen Dream, and, and he's got something planned that you don't know about. But he didn't tell you because you're an idiot. Why would he tell you? He's not running away. That's, yes, that's, that's where what they need. A heel would have helped so bad there because, well, he might have been trying to run away. And it's like it's almost like your face is playing the part of the heel, but a face on the heel, but there's no heel to rebuttal that. And there needed to be a heel there to be like, you idiot, you think Adam Cole's running away? That's what you would do. You would run away. He's probably got something planned for Dream. Well, either way, it's gotten spoiled, whatever it was, you know, more when all of yeah, and see, that would that's better. exactly what's needed so badly. Why can't they get a clue with that? Because that immediately makes you so much more engaged with the match. It adds a bit of character to the heels, and it explains a bit of what's going on to further develop the story. Right. Yeah, they had such a pretty cool entrance too. The yellow Lamborghini coming out looking like Negan with a non barbed wired Lucille, and going ahead and, and having that huge badass UE truck, you know. And it's like, oh, he showed up alone. Look at that. So he's actually gonna, <laughs> you know, take him on one on one. This is gonna be a real brawl. Shut him up, you know, and be done with it. But then, of course, he's got his help coming later on. Just the way they arrive with the distraction, I didn't care for. Oh, my God, the the, the bright lights. You know, it's like, I, I get it, but everybody starts beeping. Why would all the fans watching start beeping? <laughs> that, that was, um, at first, I, I thought, that's pretty cool that everybody's beeping. And then after about three seconds, I went, oh, my God, is that annoying? Yep. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, my God. Fucking... And it was like, I don't know, that was weird. Um. It would have been funny if in the match they started holding down the horns because Velveteen Dream made a motion or something and it was like and you know Adam Cole grabbed his ears or something and then as he did that you know Dream hit him in the stomach with the with the bat or whatever and it would have been like oh man like Velveteen Dream some kind of setup here you wondered what all these cars were here this wasn't part of the set here or anything like that the the but they were here, and everybody all today was wondering. Maybe this was a maybe the boss Triple H had these cars come out, and nobody could really tell where they were from or how they got in here. I, I think Dream had this whole thing set up, and you know anything like that. But whatever. Anyway, the beeping at the end was, it was you know they just nothing worked. It, it didn't. I mean nothing. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't work. <laughs> nothing wasn't was right to me. If you're a, a young kid, you might have thought some things were cool, but it, it fell flat to me, which is weird because I thought there was no way that I wouldn't come out at least saying that was pretty good. Like, I thought at least I was going to say that was pretty good. And I am shocked. The blood didn't even look good. You can tell it was makeup, you know, and sadly on his arm with the when he crashed through the windshield, Adam Cole, you know, he was he was, he was was bleeding. He wasn't actually bleeding. And it's like, oh, ugh, he's why? Why? Just don't have the blood if that's the case, if you're going to make it look that he's bleeding. childish. He's bleeding, son. He's bleeding. Somebody get him a newspaper. He's bleeding. I think he's bleeding, Gorilla. A little bit of the bubbly. Want some bubbly? A little bit of the bubbly. Yes, bubbly. sir. Eight. Five tenths. Very solid PPV. Also first time donating to you. Horace Fanatic. Uh, thank you, sir, for donating for the first time, man. He liked it a little bit better than we did. 8.5 out of 10. He really liked NXT tonight. I'm glad wow. you liked it, man. I wish I was there with you. 
I wish I, yeah, I genuinely, I went into it open-minded, so I wish I got more from it. You know, I, I, I was spot on with predictions as well. Everyone that I had played out. Yeah. You so. really, you really did nail it. I had two or three, I had two wrong, but you, you hit everything. It was crazy. I think, you know, I, I think the only thing that we were kind of, I thought the, the Carry oh, Cross was going to win a little faster. bit of the bubbly. Yeah. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's so who's next for the NXT title shot? Cross Balor or Loomis? Gargano versus Lee match of the night and BLM gonna cause a riot after Dream getting lynched by four white people. Yeah, Six tenths rating. They're not going to like those shots. Uh, Ed's view, thank you for the $3.00. A 6 out of 10 coming all the way from Japan from Ed's View. Thank you, Ed's View, with the $3. We will, maybe I can react to some of your uh, videos, uh, Ed's View. Um, konnichiwa. And we will... Uh, and that was that was another to thing, too. Oh, sorry to cut you off. There's so much lag in this. I apologize. Oh, it's okay. No, it's, go, go. I was done, oh, but the donation oh, came in. No. <laughs> this gave me a lot of flashbacks, so I give it 7 out of 10. Yeah, the feels is what it was tonight. And I hate when people say the feels, but I'm going to say it. Uh, Chiz Higney. Hey, hey, lots of nostalgia. Uh, you know, we don't get a lot of 90s nostalgia, so it's good to get that when we can. Right. Yeah. I, I'll I, take I, every every little drip of it. We've seen 80s nostalgia, and tonight we got 90s nostalgia. So, um, yeah. I, I thought it was fun. We even some of the 2000 with, with the you know ruthless aggression stuff recently. So it was nice to get some of the early and mid-90s, not the late 90s. We always see Attitude Era stuff. And I tried to give you guys some um, some nostalgia because of this on Twitter earlier, and I went out and I, um, well, this was more like 93, 4, 5, and 6, but I gave you some 1990, 1993 nostalgia by tweeting out about the original Super Soaker 100 and Super Soaker 200. <laughs> the, oh, man. Those things were so badass. Now, Leah said to me upstairs when I showed her the picture, she goes, yeah, I was too poor. We didn't get those. And then many people in the Twitter also said the same thing and said they had like the 75 or the whatever the fuck. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well, but, um, until I was the age of 10, my before after my father died, we, my dad made a lot of money and we were in a very rich, nice area of New Hampshire before we became poor and my dad died. So, but as a kid from one to about nine years old, I lived up, I lived a very well off life up until the world came crashing down but uh, so I have fond memories of, you know, every kid in the neighborhood got to get the Super Soaker 100, got to get the Super Soaker 200. I mean, were they really that expensive? I guess. Jesus, I didn't know that. I, I don't know. I, they might have been. But I but see, I lucked out because my uncle was uh, local police at that point in time before he was chief. And we went ahead and it, it, it's a really long story. There's there's lots of pieces to it to escalate. But the final thing was like a war that this all turned into and it was family versus like cops per se. So he had his friends that were, you know, he was all, you know, patrolling with all the other officers had a huge water war with me, my uncles, my aunts, my grandmother, you know, so it was all, it was the family versus what was better known as the SWAT team essentially of, of their local department. Right. So they had gotten these really high end super soakers for all of us. And then they came in with like, you know, actual riot water guns and things like that. And we, the, the object was like to whoever got the enemy team into the pool, but it was this, this huge, massive all out war. They played dirty. I remember they handcuffed my mother to a tree and left her there. Oh my god! Like, yeah, like I'm not kidding. Like, what? <laughs> I'm not joking. Like they, it was, it was you know out for glory and guts. But I had to be six or seven. It was, it was. They called it like the Terminator of Wars. Like it, this shit was nuts. But I remember that's how we got the super soakers because the the cops bought them for all the kids and stuff like that. So I don't know why Kenny in the chat said I'm praising the women's triple threat. I said it was terrible. Oh no, is he talking about the? Oh wait, he said. Joe, why are you praising the six-woman tag? It sucked. I know. I said it sucked. I said it was sloppy. Yeah, it had a lot of misses. They when almost the killed fuck, each when, other a few when times. When in the world did I praise that match tonight? Are you on drugs, bro? When in the world did I praise that match tonight? The triple threat at the end I thought was one of the best matches. If not, Keith Lee and Gargano and the main event tonight were the best things I saw. The opening match with the tag match with the women was a, a mess. I don't know what the hell you're listening to. I mean, I'm I'm literally trying to figure out. Like, is he just trying? To get I, me I'm to baffled talk about as well. I don't know because we literally said, you know, they almost killed each other a few times. I even made 
an actual point to say how you know Shotzi almost broke her neck and <laughs> yeah they all they, looked, they just they couldn't connect. I did praise Tegan Knox and Dakota Kai. I said I think they look great, but everything else that match was a lot. Yeah, of Candice LeRae they fought to the outside and disappeared. So yeah, that that was it for them. Her and uh, what's her name Gonzalez. I, so I mean I, that that was it. Raquel Gonzalez, her and Candice, they, boop done. You know it's like all right, see you. <laughs> Guys, we're nearing 200 likes. If we're nearing 200 likes, me and Jake DeMarco will both have orgasms together on the show. So, or Excuse me, Mia Yim. I always mix up the names. Any event. And then uh, what else do we have left? Just the main event, correct? I think that was it. So, yeah. again, typical uh, six, five or six match show. And uh, the main event was decent. Problem is, is that I'm very happy Io Shirai won. Very, very happy. Now they can get the, the belt off of Charlotte. That was a failed experiment. And I'm curious to see now, does Rhea Ripley get another shot? Or do they go with someone else for a shot at the title here? That That's something I'm at least intrigued by. But get Charlotte out of NXT. That's the ultimate thing here. So I give that a 10 out of 10 because Charlotte's going hopefully away from NXT. <laughs> if she sticks around, then I'll change my 10 score for that match. <laughs> look at the stu you look look at the stupid commercials on YouTube for the Super Soakers. Yeah, I know, right? The Super Soaker 200 this summer. Hey, Bradley got the new Super Soaker 100. <laughs> oh, 200 likes. Oh. 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 Super chat. Super chat. Hey, Joe, I'm a big fan of Code Orange now. Big fan. Uh, Jeff wrote a boss. Thank you for the donation. Yeah, that's something we didn't mention. I thought the opening with Code Orange or whatever the fuck was great. That band was great to open the show. I thought what that was awesome. Oh, yeah, a, a little job. bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's oh, bask in his glory. For he is Best. a black man. Oh, who is he? What's that <laughs> color I see? Rhetorical question, but they all know the answer. Black Lee. Keith Lee. NXT TakeOver in your blouse. Thank you for $3. Maybe they should have gotten down and washed his feet. Like all the people were washing <laughs> <laughs> black people's feet. I guess the other today or whatever. Somebody should have washed his feet. Um, but no, I love Keith Lee. So yeah, it, w it worked out. I didn't think Gargano should have had the belt unless they're going to... Hey, guys. Did you see Monday Night War tonight? Oh. War was great. I especially went with Roman Reigns went crazy and pulled out his <laughs> penis. I like Roman Reigns' penis. My name is Squire Fat. <laughs> Oh, Christ almighty. Gotta love how they made Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and that old ass-looking dirt dog look like a bunch of damn morons. Duh, it's a computer. What do we do? Get the fuck out of here with that shit. Well, a pimp named Butch, I mean, that was really a throwback to when they cut to Shawn Michaels back in the 90s doing that exact thing. He was on a laptop in, like, 1995, and Shawn was, like, looking at the computer... And Shawn Michaels is not good on computers. He doesn't get technology. And so back in 1995, they cut to Shawn, who was there answering questions on WWE.com or whatever. WWF.com at the time. And Shawn was, like, t typing in the keyboard and, like, very slowly and looking at it. And he was just kind of being goofy. And so that was a throwback to that. So I thought it was hilarious. But only because it was a throwback to that. But if you didn't know about that, then I guess it was a weird joke that, didn't make any sense. Or maybe it wasn't good anyway. I don't know. Maybe you did get it and still thought it was stupid. I don't know. But I, I just thought it was funny because I remember seeing Shawn Michaels when they cut back to him. Shawn Michaels and seeing is him on typing WWE. with like one finger at a time. Yeah. Old man style. Yeah. Dude, I, that, was, that <laughs> shit was hilarious back in the day. That oh, was... you sent me down a rabbit hole really quick. So apparently they banned the 200 version of the Super Soaker because it was causing temporary blindness in some children. But the cost of that one I haven't found yet. But the one hundred that you showed was going for upwards of eighty dollars back in the nineties. So that's yeah. a lot of money for that's it was basically a hundred today. That's what for, I thought they were. I thought they were a hundred bucks. I mean, actually today I think the equivalent would be like three hundred. 
you know, that's that's crazy. So I mean, I guess you're right. I mean, you can get a a vintage one in box still uh, for on eBay for four hundred and seventy five. So the problem with the one hundreds was the ends would break off a lot. If you yeah, uh, they weren't. I had the the later model, the the one thousand one that had like the side reservoir too. I remember a buddy of mine had the backpack one. That thing was killer. Never had to refill for hours. Right. Yeah. That's how you have Super Soaker Wars. Yeah, I don't think I've talked to you about this yet. What do you think about AJ Styles being called, basically called a racist by CM Punk? Yeah, talk about something totally unwarranted. All because they're saying AJ Styles has yet to come out and say how he feels about the the riots and George Floyd. Because he has voiced uh, his, his, hasn't voiced his opinion yet, that instantly labels him a racist. How ridiculous is that? And then Punk saying, well, that's been obvious for years. Who are you to, to throw someone else under the bus? You know, Mr. Voice of the Voiceless. For what? What? For what claim? There's no proof. There's He hasn't done anything. Well, inaction is, is just as guilty as action. Well, no, it's not. Because he's not out there marching right now, I think it's absolutely ridiculous for him to, to try and label AJ a racist. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, didn't... Punk is the biggest virtuous fake piece of garbage ever, dude. This I hate CM Punk now. I think he's, he's a, really turned. He's a scumbag, you know, head dude. over heels into into that virtue signaling woke and warrior. He's lost his mind. He's a stupid idiot. I I hope CM Punk um gets hit by a bus at this point. I mean, what a piece of garbage. I mean, this guy pl like I mean, there's one thing to call someone out like. Hey, you know, it'd be nice. I would like to see, I hope AJ speaks up on or gives some kind of message soon. You know, that'd be cool if he gave something like it, that'd be neat. But it's like to be like, yeah, he's a racist. I mean, why don't you just go get your ass kicked in the UFC again? Yeah. According to one of the uh, us, Oscar in the chat. I mean, whatever. But just CM Punk is just <laughs> such an idiot. Like what a dummy. You're an idiot. Phil Brooks, you stupid moron. You gotta get I, I I could maybe see him doing this if AJ had said something or done something, but yeah, mm, well, excuse me, nothing. Well, if you're silent, you're racist. Now that's the thing. So like that's what. Yeah, Sam if you're not speaking out, then then that's that's you know the same as being outspoken but against everything. But still, like CM Punk has called people like didn't he call someone like the like make fun of gay stuff like in the crowd? It's just like you're you're just a fake. That I it wonder, just feels like yeah. How racist do you think and, Punk and, is? Well, how about this? Again, Punk went ahead and called out everything about the Jeff Hardy angle that happened, and saying how you know it was it was disgusting and ridiculous, and it, you know it shouldn't have taken place. And but then to go ahead and think back to him pretending to be Jeff Hardy in the ring, right? Remember coming out dressed up with the face paint yeah. and all this, and, and acting and drunk. Going on, he acted acting, drunk, slurring his words, and Didn't, and the Undertaker's urn and everything, dude. Yeah. See so that's okay because oh, you were you were a heel playing a character. So then, what's the difference of Jeff Hardy allowing them to do this? Because Jeff has allowed them to use this angle. He gave the okay. That's what it is. I don't man. know if he was he was positioned into it at all. We don't know about that. But as far as it goes. He would. He agreed for this to happen, so he gave them the go ahead. I think CM Punk is racist because everything he comes out and flips out about, he has either done or done worse. So this tells Certainly me, a hypocrite. yeah, this tells me that he's some kind of hypocrite, or maybe he's a racist. So maybe you're a racist, CM Punk. Maybe you're a racist, Philly boy. But like you said so many times, he's crapped on something or come out and acted. You know, oh my God, I'm so just either a humbled or b uh, outraged. And it's like, you've done that or worse. Right. I remember him yelling, you know, you have a vagina at Vans and stuff like, you know, all those things that come back to light. And it's like, you were, you were, oh, cause I was a heel. So I was playing a character. So what's the difference? They're still portraying heel and face work. They're telling a story here. I can understand if they had some star with, with no payoff in mind, just get on the mic and shoot a promo that said, oh, my God, I can't believe Jeff Hardy got another chance. Like, you're not even facing Jeff, nothing. To just come out and say it, or even in an interview, say, I can't believe Jeff's back after his drunk ass got in trouble. You know, that would be disheartening. You're supposed to stick together as wrestlers. You're supposed to be a family and tight-knit unit. But this, forget it. That D was ridiculous. Details Williams says, how do you know he's not an, a racist 24-7? How do you know he is? What, so so then everybody's a racist. So your your thing is guilty until proven innocent. 
So if if you, I, oh, we don't know if AJ Styles is a racist. Well, then you don't know if anybody's a racist. You don't. Exactly. He hasn't done anything. But in America, we have something called like innocent until proven guilty. Dude, even if you had someone saying bad things on tape a certain way, like in public or in saying things in a video game, Randy Orton called someone an N-word in the video game a couple weeks ago. Nobody cares about that because Randy Orton's cool to, to us. Uh, whatever. So it's all just BS. Nobody, you know, he yeah, could be. Punk's rant on that? Yeah. Be- he actually said more than then, you know, come on. Yeah, I mean. Where was your uh, virtue signals ways then? It's like H3H3 H3 the other day came out and said, you know, he said it. I said it on my show, whatever. I've said it too. I've said words, but I'm not racist, but I've said it. But but we haven't, I haven't heard anything AJ said. And maybe he has said, it. I don't know. Why is he hanging out with the New Day? Why does AJ Styles hang out with the New Day and play video games all day long? Maybe if those guys stopped playing video games and actually started fucking wrestling and working on their characters, they could be seen a little bit more serious instead of playing video games all day long. But to call the guy like racist, I mean, that's just stupid. Like, I mean, you know, maybe call him out for speak. You know, you should speak up. You have in a prominent position. Well, then he's just calling him out for something. But to like help people imply that he's that is kind of disingenuous and weird. Um, not to say that he's not. Maybe somebody is. I don't know. You never know who the hell could be a bad person. Maybe. But to me, this is weird, and I think it's, it's just scary. Nowadays, thing. there's no winning, and real YT is right. If you say something, you're screwed. If you say nothing. You're even more dumped on. Yeah. Because people would say, oh, you're white. You have no reason to speak up and, and say how you feel. We don't want to hear what you have to say. We've heard enough what white people have to say. All right. Well, I'm not going to say anything. How dare you not stand up for your black brothers and show that black lives matter? And so how do you win? You can't. They, they just eat you alive. You know, I mean, as you said, million times I'll before, admit, they eat their own. I will say and admit that I do think it's I would think that AJ would tweet out something. I, I thought maybe he would tweet out like, hey, you know, love everyone, BLM, you know, got your backs, AJ got your backs, or, like, something like that. You know, just anything. So I could see what people are saying as far as that goes. Like, people think he's going to say something. But, again, there's some people that are just scared to say a damn thing. People are scared to say anything. And so that's what I think he was like. I'm not getting into that, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Ask him. But um, the opening, um, Code Orange, I thought they were pretty good. Um, thought that opening was nice. I don't know if I couldn't tell if they were playing live or if they'd played live, recorded it, and were lip syncing. I couldn't tell. I think it was live. I think they were just going for some type of theatrical frame per second, you know, thing with the cameras. So it made it look a little delayed in yeah. the shot. It looked good. It just and I was, that made it seem like they were lip syncing because it would almost look like they were mouthing the words like a, a quarter second late. But I think it was the cinematic view they were going for. I think it was live though. Okay, so it was live, yeah. All right. Well, it I'm was. Not, I I, I think it was too. Assumption. I mean, most rock bands want to be live. They don't want to lip sync anything. It just looked weird, but it looked good. And so, but it, yeah, but the, I thought it was good. I never heard of them really, so I thought they were pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Super to, chat good. party. Steve Kalan is in my house. Hey Joe, I give NX team your house seven tenths. Seven tenths coming in from Steve Kalan up in Canada. Oh, Canada. I totally forgot about that. Jimmy's right in the chat. What about when uh, Jericho was going after CM Punk's family saying that, oh, they're all a bunch of drunks and addicts and they had the whole DUI right there in the ring and we had uh, CM Punk count the alphabet backwards, hopping around on, you know, count the alphabet, yeah, list the alphabet backwards, hopping around on one foot, you know, counting off numbers, all that stuff. So they did the whole you know, DUI test right there in the ring. But that was okay, but this isn't. <laughs> yeah, he's a hypocrite, fake idiot. I mean, that's you. That's what CM Punk is. How about you? I hope you go. I, you're a loser, Punk. You look like an idiot in the octagon, you stupid idiot. What else we got? You oh, used your privilege a little bit of the bubbly. to take someone else's it. spot. Bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's- How's this for a mind fuck? Charlotte beating Apollo Crews for the U.S. title. Women's and racial equality hang in the balance. Oh yeah, that's such good shit. For tonight I say six tenths. Like the matches, but TakeOver is so good usually because of the... Because of the fans. Yeah, they help build on it. But I even think if you had fans tonight that this was a little bit short. Like, I think we could even tell tonight that it was a little bit short. Robbie Hyde. Thank you, Robbie Hyde, for the donation, man. I still think yeah, absolutely. Fans would have helped, but here we go. only about by half a point, here probably. We go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Oh. oh, no. Charlotte is a man overrated. Buenos noches. Aubrey James, thank you for the $5. Charlotte is a man. 
Wow. Who in the chat before said that uh, Charlotte Nunes. should face Andrade for the U.S. title? Oh, my God. She beats her own <laughs> boyfriend? She's be, uh, looking like uh, Amanda Nunes. Wrestling. Oh, last night, speaking of Amanda Nunes on the uh, UFC, we talked about, obviously, I was live yesterday. We were on Corrupted Podcast on my Patreon with Famous B and Drew, and we talked about UFC a little bit. You know, one of the things said on UFC the other night was this, Jake. I don't know if you heard this. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> Dude, I, no, I, didn't hear I tweeted that video out yesterday after during UFC because I couldn't believe he said it. He's like, he's like, yo, I'm going to come on your ass. And he's like, I mean, I'll come for your ass. And it just didn't get better. It was worse. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. Good God. You started man. licking the mic after that. <laughs> you ridiculous piece of shit. Yeah, thank you, uh, TJ. <laughs> you ridiculous piece of shit. Um, play up. Uh, we can play Dave uh, calling him the N word seven times, and then play. Oh, there this. we go. You ridiculous piece of shit. You better win your word. fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. Unbelievable what a breath. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, let's go back to the donos, I guess. Well, is there anything uh, we missed on the show? We got all the matches. I think we hit everything. Yeah, that, um, that's the that's the show in a nutshell. I mean. Should have made the really ring with the floor main, white. I don't. I don't think there was much that we didn't cover here. The crossbody from the second story of the uh, the house, you know, the top of the stage, the house. Yeah, that looked. <laughs> How about when Todd Pengel was, was like, "And we're this, and we're going to be giving away or not giving away a house. <laughs> there won't be a house. <laughs> we're not giving away a house. No more nine hundred numbers. Yeah, those things I did enjoy. Some of them were good. Yeah, I thought they were pretty all yeah. good. Yeah, I, I liked it. I liked that stuff. So the nostalgia carried it for me a little bit too much, but uh You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> now, obviously Charlotte didn't get pinned, so they'll they'll hopefully not play with that idea going further. I hope she's just done with NXT. Like I said, that was my enjoyment of the match, knowing that she'll be back to the main roster. But we'll see what happens because she hit, you know, Ripley with the moonsault and then flares on the outside. She's she's obviously done for. And that's when Io Shirai gets the victory. So hopefully they don't say, well, you didn't beat me. It was a triple threat. And if that's the case, hopefully they don't drag it on long. Just do it on TV. Don't wait for another takeover. Have the rematch. Have Io Shirai beat Charlotte. Really put her over and then move on. Right. Would they, um, What whatever happened to that original house? Didn't they like bulldoze it or it got sold like seven times or? I the, don't know. The original I, I, in your I, I, house, it I'm like look into that. Like I think the person like couldn't afford it or something because of the taxes or something. Even though there was, yeah, because it's crazy how many times you know people win things and just. I guess the Price is Right has multiple warehouses just filled to the top with prizes that people <laughs> couldn't claim because they couldn't they couldn't or didn't pay the taxes on them. Trips, boats, cars, just just tons of stuff that people have never claimed. Yeah, because. In the end, like you had to pay the taxes and then would have had to pay the insurance and Yep. So you're like, Oh my god, I want a car. Now I have to pay six grand for the taxes, insurance, and registration. But why wouldn't you, you know, why wouldn't you take it and then just sell the car? I don't think you can take the car until you pay the taxes first. So you have to have that money up front. Man, you should have looked they should have looked for a buyer right away, be like, Hey, wanna buy a car? You can get a twenty thousand dollar car for uh, I'll sell it to you for eight thousand dollars. But I'm, yeah, I'm going to really. need a thousand. I'm going to need like thirty. I'm three thousand dollars up front. Like, I don't know what you could have brokered something. I would have thought. You would think. I don't know. Hit that subscribe button, baby. Um, Paula C. Thank you for subbing to the Joe Cronin Show here with uh, Jake DeMarco. We're live. This is in your house. How's everybody doing, motherfuckers? Come get some of this big one. We are looking for somebody. To dominate the top donator, a pimp named Butch has the top donation and is the current JCS digital champion who can somehow become the largest donator and take that digital JCS championship. Do a little basketball dance off the concrete. I mean, I'm just so sick of you little meth head devil worshipers. I'll be honest, I'd like to take a big bite out of your face. Keith Lee is a superstar. <coughs> Keith Lee is a superstar. I agree, Aubrey James. I think Keith has been yeah, great. I think we've always liked him. His outfit representing Black Lives Matter. And... I didn't even notice that. 
<laughs> I gotta be honest, I didn't even notice he did that. Yeah, with his outfit when he went ahead and came out to the ring. What do you have a he should have wrote BBC on his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no that. <Zans. laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't even can't even tell on his on his shorts. It was on the jacket when he came out. Oh, I missed it. I missed most of his entrance, to be honest, so that's probably why I didn't see it. Imagine that. We know that's what you should do. On one side, you can put a BLM, and then on the other side, BBC. Super chat. Like that. Party. Think about it, Keith. Think about it, bro. Hey, Joe. I'm an AU Mark, and I enjoy takeovers except this one, but every time I try to watch the TV show, I turn it off. Is the problem with me? Help. Um, I enjoy takeovers except this one, but every time, no, Duncan, Bradley, Duncan, another Canada. What's up, Canada? Um, Duncan, dude, I'm with you. I'm the same way. I don't, yeah. I, I, I choose to watch AEW over the weekly show and which is weird because I thought I would love it. So, you know, you're not alone, dude. There's something up with that. And I don't, I don't know. What I was huge here. in NXT, so huge in NXT. And I was, you know, eating up every morsel they had of it. Fat Joe concluded. And I could not get enough of the weekly product. And then all of a sudden when they went live, it just, I stayed with it for a few weeks and I just couldn't continue. I'll, I'll get the, you know, the play by play, the catch up and whatnot, but it just doesn't, it, it doesn't have the feel that it used to. And yeah, why society's right. It was on the back of his ass too. It said black lives matters big on the back of his ass. I guess I'm stupid. So um, I saw, I saw a bask in his glory. <laughs> I just saw it on the, the ring out gear, but I didn't see it on the back of his ass. So I did do I'm retarded, a, anyways. I did do a review of last uh, NXT's uh, Wednesday show. We we did the live AEW review, and then a couple a day later or so, I posted my review of NXT. So I did do a. They did get me to do an NXT review the other day, and then coincidentally, I liked it. So it was good that I liked it a, a lot. I think I think this was the first week in a while that I said they beat it. They beat AEW. I think I hadn't said yeah. that in a while. And and I mean, here's the thing. It's not like it's been bad. I just don't think it's been as enticing or as exciting most often as compared to AEW. And AEW hasn't been great every week either. You know, it's just they've had a, a little bit more than what NXT has had to offer. When they get back into the actual bump and grind that NXT is known for, though, that's when I feel like they really shine. Yeah, I think you're right. And, you know, one thing that NXT does have over AEW to me is identity it still feels like nxt knows their identity of what they're doing yes aew everybody has a character everybody has some some form of of well tv time with development and things going on as where some of the people i feel in aew kind of mesh together not just that but in aew i feel like they don't quite know yet do we want to be this super serious new japan like thing with yeah, scores based and wrestling. cards or do we want to be this like make believe over the top ridiculous show? They don't really know which one they are, but right now they're the ridiculous show. And even before the COVID stuff, they were pushing that way. And so it's very interesting to me that um yeah, that they don't quite know yet, but I kind of like that in a way, but it's definitely obvious that they're wishy-washy. You don't know what's going on. NXT feels like they're the ones that should have the stats almost. But then me and Yeah, Famous they B, should be more sports-based analytical wrestling and i you know neo in the chat neo the one says they feel very the same each time and that's it because they have a formula and they stick to it as where aew is trying new things you know you're getting stampede stadium brawls and stuff like that nxt it, it's very consistent you have your opener with the promo then you've got some some quicker matches then you've got you know your your middle mid card <laughs> promo slash match then you have your big main event and the wrestling is always really, you know, on par, 7 out of 10. But there's never anything like, wow, outstanding, excellent, you know, brand new. We don't really often get that wow factor. That's why, you know, Cross's entrance with Scarlet had everybody going nuts because it was just something different. Yeah, and I think, like, um, me and Famous B talked about this the other day. And if you guys haven't heard famous be uncorrupted or monetize this we had some we didn't talk a lot about wrestling but we had a couple moments where we did and this was one of the things we talked about which was like even you know what's his face the new guy coming in the other day the big muscly guy i forget his name cage and um you know he comes in in a match and destroys everybody suddenly he's the number one contender and it was like well what's the point for the stats then and all that stuff like why have the stats at all no no mention of it even like and so I'm like, well, that's the reason. Yeah, don't say, oh, he jumped the line by winning that ladder match. You know, we had many other people that were 
more deserved than him, but he proved his spot and earned his way to the top by, you know, capturing that briefcase, whatever. No, nothing. We don't get. Yeah, he got put in and he, but he, he got, how did he get put into the match? Yeah, that's the, that's yeah, the we don't even question. know how he got into the, the double or nothing pre-show ladder battle royal, whatever it was, you know, the ladder match there. But when he won, and, and it kind of felt like, oh, undeserved as well, because when he came in, it was it was later towards the end of the match, which I guess it's all about luck of placement. But still, you know, you got this new debut, and I don't feel like he really did enough to cement his his victory that night. And the other thing is, I think I think, but I think in the end, what it tells me is maybe the stat thing is never going to work because NXT, like we said, is is they're the ones that more should be doing the stats, but they don't do them either, and that allows them to sort of be able to continue the traditional storytelling of this guy deserves a match, this guy doesn't, and this guy could just get a match at any point because we're telling stories. So it really interferes, it interferes with the storytelling, and I wonder if that is something the WWE or AEW picked up on, and they were like, yeah, let's bail on that because, I mean, let's have the scores on the website or whatever, but in the end, and it's cool when people come out with them there, but... In the end, it really doesn't help a damn thing. And one of the other things I was thinking of, what about streaks? Streaks is another good way of getting out of it. So maybe a guy gets five wins in a row, and it's like five winnings, five streak. And streaks are really important, too. That way, if the guy is like five and 30, even though he's five and 30, he's won his last five matches in a row. So that Yeah, that bumps him up the rankings and gives him a shot at the title or whatever they want to accomplish. Absolutely. That'd be a great way to do it. Those little modifiers to add in for the stats right. makes makes it like a wild card option. Absolutely. Right, right. Uh, speaking of victories, this was Finn Balor's 11th victory on NXT TakeOver events. So good on him for that much. That's a crazy stat to have, surely. Um, we're also seeing updates on Velveteen Dream and his status said uh, during a post-takeover conference call, Triple H was asked about the possibility of main roster call-ups soon. He gave a long answer about how shifting is always a possibility. When it comes to Velveteen Dream specifically, he said, we'll just have to wait and see. He said, as far as Velveteen Dream goes, you'll have to wait and see. There's always going to be movement of talent, and that's always going to be shifting around. So I think that's more or less we'll see him up very soon. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're planning on bringing more anyways so i could certainly see that happening uh wwe did go ahead you know and tape backlash this weekend it won't be live they had brought in more performance center recruits this morning to film at the performance center today for wwe backlash that'll run next sunday so obviously we'll have our predictions and whatnot this week for you guys make sure to check that out but uh, also updates after the show it does say that charlotte flair wants to pursue a men's title in wwe she was speaking with Sports Kita. She stated that she wants to go after Ugh. a men's title. How could she speak with those pieces of garbage? Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I know. She made it's fun of JD, he... but she's speaking with the guy who literally like destroyed women. Like, oh my god. I know, god, right? Dude. Of all people to speak to. Um, uh, yeah, that's gotta, sickening. Gotta, gotta love, no, go know, ahead, though. I'm sorry. I, there, just, but, I just had to bring uh, She up. said it's something that I want to pursue, but if you're looking at the big picture, when women are succeeding in different organizations all around the world, we're all succeeding, and we're all winning from that. So for her to hold that accolade is just you know something we should support and be extremely proud of as a woman to see her do, because that's when one's doing well, when we're all doing well. So basically her point is, is if I'm doing well, that means everyone's doing well. Don't you get it, Joe? <laughs> Yeah, I get it. What I, a terrible we, interview. Like, I understand what she's getting at, but that sounds so bitterly selfish. So long as I'm exceeding and I'm winning <laughs> titles and, and breaking records, that means it's good for all womankind. Yeah, how virtuous. So she stands on the on the women's thing so she can get over everything. Like, dude, the, 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 yeah, the wrestlers... Yeah, very two-faced. I'm sorry. The wrestlers nowadays, and all of you young, the young people out there, I'm going to be the old guy now, you are all so soft. This stuff will never be good again. Like I, I'm, I'm not, the, I'm not as tough as guys like who wrestled back in the '80s, like Stone Cold and those. But you can at least appear to be a badass and a tough person. None of these people are tough now. It's all about women do this, and we're um this, and we got a minority and special interest this, and everything is. I'm gonna go play a video game now. Like wrestlers suck now. Like oh my god, dude, you all are so bad now. It, it's really bad. It's pathetic. Like you really suck, and it, it is it's it's proof. The proof is in the numbers of who watches wrestling now. You really stink, all of you. I'm sorry, you do. 
You just do. Hey, want to play video games? Oh my God, I'm so virtuous. And bleh. Like, dude, what happened to Bret Hart and Stone Cold and fucking Sable? Like, even in, like, Luna Vachon and people that actually looked like badasses were wrestlers. Now the friggin' Fruity Pebble Brigade are the goddamn wrestlers. It's so stupid, it's horrible. Here's a donation. Super Jack. Super Jack. Finn Balor is boring and predictable moveset. Um, Finn Balor is boring, predictable moveset. Aubrey James, thank you. I know, he really does have that. You know... A lot of the wrestlers nowadays remind me of the NBA. They're like NBA superstars as opposed to like hockey players. It's weird. I know I play video games, but I don't want the wrestlers to. Stop. I am very, very, very impressed with Carrie and Cross. I hope they don't drop the ball. <laughs> NXT feels like they're a step behind. I think NXT suffers the most of not having fans in the crowd. What's up, Jake? Jacob Fuego. What's going on, Big Jacob? I think you're right. I think because, you know, AEW can pull off all the gimmicky weird stuff so they don't need the crowd. WWE sucks either way. And NXT really felt the crowd. And so, yeah, NXT is suffering the most. The most out of anything. The, the, even the... Yeah. You've got a new subscriber. Mark Bendini. Uh, thank you for subbing, Mark. Welcome. Everybody pour Mark a beer. Yeah, you know what? Even, sub. even the hockey players are like this now, too. You're right. They're kind of soft. They wear these expensive shoes, and they're like, hey, man, did you see my thing? I got this cologne I'm wearing. Or whatever. <laughs> it's like, what, what the hell happened to people, man? I, I don't know. Uh, and and yeah. Brian made a great point. Oh, one more coming Smoke in. weed every day. Smoke it. Oh, this yeah. was a bad NXT event. I prefer no crowd over a fixed crowd. The crowd is was makes NXT special, and if you don't have a genuine crowd, it's sass. Four tenths. I'm gl I, I am glad there were people there, though. Will Tactics, we love it's you, man. It's for sure. But the, here's the thing. AEW, I said this to several people earlier as well. AEW's crowd is more natural because they allow the faces <laughs> to be faces, the heels to be heels. When you have everyone in the audience cheering the same people and booing the same people, it feels very robotic and unoriginal. When you allow the characters to still be themselves, even if you don't know who's in the audience and you don't know that, all right, this is this is a face, this is a heel, they're still going to, not everybody cheers for Roman Reigns and boos, you know, Randy Orton. Some people still chew, uh, cheer for Orton. So it's like they're not always going to boo the heel entirely. You know, it, it just, it feels like canned laughter, you know, like a, from a sitcom. That's yeah. the unfortunate part of it. And Brian made a great point too, before we get off track, is that Tessa did this for Impact. You know, she she won the title, obviously, and she was a, a woman that won the male's title. But, of course, Charlotte doesn't acknowledge that because it's not her. <laughs> yeah, that's a little that's, fucked up. Right? That's a little messed up. That's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Holy crap. Yeah, I mean, Tessa already did it, and now you can't have her go ahead and <laughs> acknowledge, oh, look at this, you know, look at how much she did for another company. No, if Charlotte doesn't do it, it doesn't count. Well, I mean, I guess, I, in a way, I don't blame him for acknowledging the other. You don't have to acknowledge Impact. It's all BS. It's all BS is the point. Bring AJ Styles and Seth Rollins to NXT to hit phenomenal curb stomps on SJW Lee and Kitty Diddle a Dream. Bring AJ Styles and Seth Rollins to NXT. Yeah, I mean, imagine AJ Styles versus Keith Lee. Yeah, that would be now that would be awesome. That'd be pretty cool, Spaz Phoenix. I'm all for that. Good call with that, man. I might be down. He's for always that. great with those dream matches. Yeah, it would be pretty crazy. Spaz Phoenix, thanks for the five dollars, man. I'm gonna let some more donations come in because they are coming in in the chat. If you guys haven't given your rating, feel free to drop it. I'll take a peek at them uh, throughout. Um, out of ten. In your house tonight, great throwback, great nostalgia. Um, yeah, but and Jimmy says, you know, Jimmy Joyce says China did it first. Yeah, China won the IC title, and, you know, yeah. there had been other women throughout time, too, but it, it's just the point that, you know, Tasso won the big belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's good. Just dropped by for a minute to say hello to everyone in chat. Miss you and Jake. Love you guys. Love you, D. Welsh. How's it going, man? At home. Good to hear from you, D. Welsh. Wonder if D. Welsh was able to catch you in your house. He's in his What's house. What's up, baby? Worried he's about, he's worried locked about baby. in his house in quarantine. 
He's in the baby quarantine right now. No, no he's locked up. <laughs> sure, they told me today after stabbing my brain with a Q-tip, you know, you can't go anywhere. You can't even share popcorn with anybody. They're like, <laughs> make sure you do nothing. Completely isolate yourself. It, this way it keeps everybody safe that's at the hospital when you have to go for tests and stuff. But still, it's like, uh, we're all used to it by now. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I've been in the damn house for like weeks. So what the hell are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. Uh. What if the He's coming for the JCS Digital what Championship. What if us? What if they killed us? Get the Turkey Club t-shirt. our children. What if the turkeys ate us? What if they filleted us? If the turkeys ate us? If they had to hate us? The Thanksgiving was a little bit different. Instead, the turkeys ate us. They gobbled us apart. But first, they'd eat our nuts. And then they eat a bud. The turkeys ate us. What if, what if, what if the turkeys ate us? Instead of mashed potatoes, instead the turkeys ate us. I'm giving this a six, five tenths. The men's main event fell flat. Charlotte the robot always gets what she wants. Very well may win a men's title. Hope to God not, but very well may. Much love, Jake, Joe, and Chat. I am Charlotte. I will stuff my fist in my butthole. Um, Jason Tarr. Jason Tarr! Coming in with the $29. And Jason Tarr. Thank you, Jason. I agree, man. I get you. I'm, I'm, I'm there with you on the rating. Jason is going to be the top donator right now, and he's going to be taking home. He's got home. that belt, that in-your-house JCS title. I know. Who wants the in your house one tonight? I don't know. It might take an alien fifty one area fifty one. Oh! Figure it. Out. <laughs> Figure it out. Finger it out. Finger it out. Maybe I'm reaching, but some of you guys saying that this was a four or five, you are basically saying that this is with some of the bad main roster shows we've seen in the past. Six, five tenths. Plus, you watch AU you more than anyway on Wednesday, so you don't know the story. Uh, Malibu Al, just because I don't uh, review the show doesn't mean I don't watch it. Malibu Al, thank you for the $12. But I gave you the same rating you did, man. I'm going 6.5. That was a four or five, and you basically saying that it was with some of the bad main rock. What? Wait, what Malibu Al? You think it was he a says, four? Because we're watching AEW more, we don't know the storylines, which isn't the case because we, we make sure we always catch up if we don't watch it then that night. But I wait. do go back and watch it, so do you. And you said uh, saying that this is a four or five is basically saying that this is what some of the bad main roster shows we've seen in the past. Yeah, but no, a but, bad but, main but, roster show usually gets a but three we gave or a four. It, we gave it a six. Yeah, you gave it a 6.5, so. I gave it a 6.5. I gave it the same rating you gave it. So what, what is he saying? Well, he says we don't watch the show. We do watch the show. And now he's saying that we gave it a four. I gave it a six. So what are you saying? None of that donation yeah, makes it. makes any sense to me. Not, is he on drugs? Am I on drugs? Like, what are we talking about? We're all on drugs. Maybe I'm reaching, but some of you, oh, some of you guys saying that it was a four or five are basically saying that is this some of the main roster. Yeah, I get what he's saying. Okay, yeah, I'm giving it a six five. I gave it what you gave it, and I watch NXT. I just don't review it every week. Um, so yeah, I mean, but I do. I have missed a few episodes. That's true, but I'm giving it a six point five. I saw what I saw. I knew the stories going into this, and I saw what I saw. It's a six or a six point five to me, something like that. 
Maybe somebody thought it was a seven. Maybe some people thought it was a five. I don't know. But yeah, um, you know, somebody gave it an eight point five. So damn, yeah, some people gave it an eight point five. I mean, Jesus, what the hell were those other takeovers then? Like those were like tens or elevens. Teens out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> I think I get what he's saying now, though. I a little bit. He's talking about anybody in the chat, I guess. But um, I don't know how you know anybody in the chat. Maybe skips at AEW or NXT, but. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not really sure. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Yes, Look son. At this stuff. Oh, oh. You better win your fight because I'm coming on there. Every time I see trailer trash, I think of white back fag mountain Charlotte, and I imagine her and Nia snacks of lesbian scissors sex. Oh, my God. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, bro. I'm coming for that ass. Key de great. 186 for the three dollars thank you man yeah making reference to tommy living there as well well it's funny you're making reference to tommy because tommy um tweeted me today i guess obviously he wasn't feeling good enough on friday to be on monetize this but today he's feeling good enough to become chester apparently so here's tommy on twitter uh what in the fuck oh, in the world did he tag me in? tommy tagged me in this on twitter hello joe Cronin. i heard you've been asking about me no I heard you have been asking about me. Well, I've been asking about you too. And I want to know when our makeup session could be. Oh. <laughs> Joe Cronin, I want my close up with you. I want my close up with you. I will be seeing you soon. Trust me. I will, Joe Cronin. I want my close-up with you. Mm. Hello, Joe Cronin. Jesus Christ. That, you know what I got to say to that, Tommy? You ridiculous piece of shit. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> that is... My dick just fell off watching that. Jesus, what the fuck was that, Tommy? I mean, he tweeted that to me. He fucking tweeted he wants, that to me. He wants your close up. He wants to be real close up to you. Apparently, good wow. God, man, dude, he wants Pride to... Month with the rainbow hair. I'm telling you, he wants to cut me into pieces and then eat the pieces up. That's what he wants to do. Seriously, he wants to gobble something. Ugh, I'm gonna throw up, man. Anyway, let's go back to the donations. Did you know the inventor of the super soaker is a black man? But the white man takes credit for it having all those milky cracker cream of wheat pussy white boys in the commercials. Fuck that shit, the Neager needs water more than you Anglo fucks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Taking it oh. back for the black, laying it out. <laughs> you ridiculous piece of shit. That is fucking hilarious. Uh, taking it back for the black. Thank you, man. Well, I mean, that's what they normally do, right? They take the music. They take the first. They took rock. Then they take rap. I mean, you know, what, that's what we do. I mean, come on, bro. We take the land. I mean, what else what, we got? What do you expect? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Heavy that's stuff. Bubbly. Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Joe, I enjoyed your reaction video of The Rock. Cool to see you be able to call it like you see it. I too agree with you that he is 100 correct. <laughs> yeah, some people are like, oh, he's acting. Well, even if he is, I agreed with what he said. Uh, heavy steps. Thanks for the $3, man. I appreciate that. I liked it, man. Pump me up. That guy pumps me up. That guy could tell me to go, like, drag the people out of Subway and then eat their feet, and I'd do it. That's how good he is at, uh... At his rants or promos or here we go, speeches. About to get it, man. Here we go. About to Whatever. get it, man. Here we go. Thank you, Heavy here Steps. We go, here we go. Oh, heavy oh, Steps. Oh, no. Network Guy TV. That's crazy how Rhea took another pin. Why couldn't Charlotte take the pin? Also, where does Velveteen Dream go from him? Sounds like he's going to the main roster, apparently, Network Guy. He goes up and Charlotte goes away and they hopefully fix Rhea Ripley a bit because I didn't see her losing this belt at Mania. I, I really didn't see her losing the belt for quite some time, especially the way she took it from Baszler, who was so dominant for upwards of, what, two years with yeah. her two reigns? I mean, come on. Surprising. The person that beat her should, should not be getting their ass kicked like this all the time. 
someone did post a Velveteen Dream hitting Adam Cole with the uh, the baseball bat while he was in the car, and they labeled it Black Lives Matters protester attacks white man in the streets during riots. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That's great. I saw that in the Discord. That's hilarious. I also want to welcome new subscriber. He hit the join button down below under my video that says join. Jerome Spicer, he's here, and he's a member of the JCS Army now. Thank you, man, and thanks to everybody who's been signing up on Patreon. Check out my Patreon, guys, if you want to support my show and, and uh, hear all the bonus content. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Appreciate that. Jason Tarr, top donation at 25 bucks. What do you guys have to say about this? Tomorrow night's Monday Night Raw. Anything else in the world? UFC. We're talking about it tonight. I'm here. Normally, this is my Sunday night gaming night. So I'm going to be staying on and playing games. So it's still coming up on that. We still got some more donations to play. What do you think of Todd Pettengale coming back? He had a little issue with his green screen at some points. Did you notice that? It was as bad as my Chroma King. <laughs> I did not notice, but I was also watching on my computer. So it was a bit of a smaller screen. So that might have made it easier not to pick up. Yeah, there was a couple of cuts where the back of his suit was glowing. The green was coming out and everything, and it wasn't. It was, I, <laughs> That's I was pretty like, funny. That's funny. This is the WWE. Now, probably they just either sent him stuff or he had it already or he lives somewhere. And so he just set it up himself and did a pretty good job, actually. But Yeah, I didn't hear anything about him coming in to film anything. or Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. might be it. They could even send him something pretty simply. Yeah, that's probably what it was. He either had it or they sent it to him. Guys, if you want to um, be on the show tonight, you guys can jump in. Jump into the Discord, man. We have an on hold section. Love to hear from you guys tonight on Discord. Oh, a few people were trying to to reach in with Skype, but I'm gonna get out of here in a minute, so I can go. I gotta go take some meds and whatnot. But uh, I will be with you for the raw review tomorrow. I know some people did say they wanted to call in on Skype, so I'll oh, okay. do that when I'm not here. This I'll probably here. open Skype too, yeah, so you guys can call regular too, yeah. If, yeah, yeah, I know a few people asked about it in the chat. So, in your house. In your ass, son. That's that's what Tommy wants with Chester. Jesus. Man, I can't that's believe still he's, scaring me. he's threatening me on Twitter. He would have loved to have seen uh, Velveteen Dream tonight dressed like Negan. That'd be a highlight for him. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. He's got man. his he's got his Lucille bat, so. <laughs> She's back, bro. Um, She's back and in charge. Tommy. But thank you so much for having me tonight. I will definitely see you tomorrow for the Raw review, and then uh, I will let you know Wednesday what happens if I end up having surgery or not. Hopefully not, and then I'll be back for the rest of the week. But if so, I'll keep in touch and let you know what's going on. All righty. Thank you, Jake, at Countdown Ended. We'll talk to you soon, man. Love you, buddy. I appreciate it greatly. Everybody stay sexy, stay healthy. Have a great night. Thank you. All right. Thank you, man. Good to talk to you. I didn't even know Jake was going to be here tonight, so it was like an extra bonus of sex. It's great. Oh, yeah. Got to keep it sexy. All right. Well, I'm staying on. Everybody wants to call 339-226-6610. Uh, in your house. And the donations are on, so we will play as many of those as possible. Because uh, we want to feed my family supper. Um, oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? Hello, Joe Cronin. How are you doing there? What are you? Oh my <laughs> god. You're the guy who molested Debe. Huh? You're the guy that mol <laughs> You're the guy that molested Debe. <laughs> Well, she was my bride, but she ran away from me. I can't find her anymore. Oh, what the hell is going on? What did you what did you what did you do with Tommy and C? He's tied up in the closet right now. Oh my god, are you serious? Who else is there anybody else that you're gonna be tying up? Maybe you at some point. Like sexually? Like you're gonna play with me? <laughs> I have a toy here, Joe, and I like to use it a lot. Ugh, like a dildo or something? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> oh my god, what in the hell is What the hell are you doing? <laughs> Don't you remember me, Joe? Yeah, you're Chester the Molester. No, uh, Chester the Psychotic Cloud. You gave life to me. I know, I did give life to you. I bought I bought you. You wouldn't be here if it wasn't for me. But you're a molester, huh? 
No, I'm not. Are you sure? Better watch out, Joe. Someday I may pop up near your house. <laughs> then we'll have some fun. Some real fun. Chester, are you the same guy who wants to go and attack the people in the streets? Are you on the police's side or the or the or the rioters' sides or the protesters' uh, side? My own person. I do what I want when I want. What what exactly do you do? I spread terror and fear. That's what I do. <laughs> oh my god. Well, um, did you happen to see in your house tonight, Chester? You missed uh, the throwback to the 90s tonight in the WWE. Are you a wrestling fan? No, they're all a bunch of losers, and so are you, Joe Cronin. How many kids have you wrestled with? None. <laughs> so you're not a fan of any of Tommy's friends either, huh? You like you really go after everybody. <sighs> Tommy. Tommy's a loser, a failure, and an idiot at the same time. But I thought you were attacking people for Tommy at one point, so now you don't like him. I was. I was attacking him for him. Okay. But the fact is, I figured out what he is and what he is. What he is? What is he? He's fake, and he's a loser also. Wow, so he's just like um, Ashley and Hamza. I took care of Hamza. Don't worry about that. Who's going to take care of Hamza's kids? How about I take care of your kids, Joe? Oh, what the hell? Wait a minute. What the hell? What? You ridiculous piece of shit. You ridiculous piece of shit. What are you going to do? What, what are you going to do to my kids? We'll, we'll blow some balloons up and have some fun. That's it? They're just, you're just going to play with balloons with my kids? <laughs> well, they're going to be special balloons. They're going to be called Joe Cronin balloons. <laughs> and then I'll be their daddy. <laughs> oh, Fuck you, Joe Cronin. What about Leah? What about my wife? <laughs> what about my wife, Leah? Would you like to have a piece, a piece of her? God damn it, that was terrifying. Chester, I hope that Tommy's okay. I'm a little bit concerned about Tommy. That was super terrifying. I mean, I don't know what the, what the hell is wrong with him. That was some of the most insane shit that I've seen in a while from him. That was very cringy and creepy. I mean, at least the $150 mask that we bought the guy finally paid off. You know, finally, like, you know, he was able to become something he's always wanted to become. Now, Chris Hansen, you're right. Where is Chris Hansen? He's in, he's investigated so many other people. Why hasn't he investigated Tommy yet? That's a really good question. Chris Hansen, you need to get on this Tommy shit really quickly. He is scared of Leah. Yeah, no doubt about it. He is very scared of Leah. That was terrifying to say the least i mean it really was this is very disgusting on a night where we're celebrating nxt in your house that's what happens tommy calls as chester and 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 the whole reason why he has the Chester mask mask is because of monetize this. We got him the money for that, and now he's gonna now he's gonna hurt people in the mask. How like we're gonna be held liable for that because we made him the money for it. Monetize this throwback from uh, Tommy and C uh, friend uh, Chester, who is now not his friend anymore, and is taking people out. Here we go, I'm about to get it, man. Here we go, I'm about to get it, man. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 no. You heard that ridiculous stat about Charlotte Flair, right? Tom Phillips just said she's been in 66 title matches. Absolutely absurd. Oh, my God. That's cr Really? That's all. Jesus, that's. 
That's a lot of matches, man. I mean, we're talking about on TV, too, like not house shows and or anything else like that. Not that they have many at house shows, but DJ Pac-Man. Wow. 66 title matches for Charlotte. I mean, she has been around now for like six years, right? Or six or seven years. And so, that I mean, we're, it makes a little sense. That's a lot, though. That is a lot. That's a lot that of title matches. Thank you, Pee pee poopy butt penis ass. Okay. What the f, <laughs> f my relatives? <laughs> f my relatives, dude. That dude, that guy's name is F my relatives. That's like one of the funniest goddamn names I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god. Tommy, thank God. Guys, he's alright. Tommy's alive. Tommy's alive, everybody. Hey Joe. How you doing? You got away from Chester the Molester. I can't believe it, dude. Oh, He's a fucking lunatic. Did he do it? I, I, I sometimes don't know what he does. When I, well, he had me tied up in the closet over there. I just got out of the closet, and he's now gone. I don't know where he is. He's running off somewhere. But, my God, he, I hope he didn't say anything, dude. I hope he didn't say anything that was inappropriate. He said, like, he, was molest, he, said he was going to molest my kids. Wow. Jeez, the guy's got personal problems, I swear. Like I don't think I don't think he molests people. I think he just uh he tortures people. I don't no, think I, he's I think I heard him. I think he said he's gonna molest my kids and he hopes the cops take out one of the races. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about Chester, but that's just he's a he's a <laughs> lunatic, dude. He's a he's out there. He is, man. Definitely some kind of racist pedophile, but that's okay because it is what it is. He's going around doing chaos everywhere. Chester, Tommy's former friend, Chester, the mask wearer, grabbing kids, hating on Black Lives Matter. Just a absolute insanity from Chester, Tommy. Um, I, I agree. You should be scared of him. I don't know if he's racist. I don't think he's a child molester. I just think he's a clown that causes terror. I think he's just a terrorizer. I swear. I thought he said, I want black kids in my basement. I swear to God, he said that on Twitter and earlier. I don't know. Like uh, He's just a <laughs> crazy dude. He is crazy. But Tommy, man, I'm glad you got away. Obviously, he let you go because you're white. Or you'd be dead right now. So I am. Thank thank God you're white, Tommy. That's all I've got to say. Otherwise, and you're not five. If you were five and not white, you would be in pieces right now in a basement. So thank God you're okay. I love you. I'm so glad you're. Well, all right. I, I tell you what. I don't know if I've, I. You know, people have been talking about situations they've had with the police, but you know, I had a situ. I don't know if I ever told you about that situation I had with a police officer once. What happened with you? Well, are you, like the swatting that happened to you or something else? No, this was a while back ago. I was uh, coming, going to a gas station to get a candy bar or something like that. And I was coming back and I'm walking on the other side of the street and I hear whoop, whoop, whoop. And I look over and it's a cop. And he's like, come here for a second, sir. And of course, this is the middle of the night. I'm wearing a black trench coat. And uh, I'm like, okay. And I, I go over there and he's like, uh, what you doing out here, son? I'm like, oh, I just went to the gas station to grab me a candy bar. That's all. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. What's up? And he's like, uh, first he starts asking me, do you have any crack on you, son? No. Do you have any crack on you? Do you have any drugs on you? No. And here's one of the biggest harebrained questions he is, asked Is this me. the condom story? Yes. He says, do you have any condoms on you? <laughs> the cop asked you if you had a condom. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, like, but I, I can say, yeah, and I'm, like, I'm saying, I legitimately think if I had been a different race, legitimately, he probably would have, like, slammed me up against his car or something like that. And, you know, who knows? Like, what, what would have happened to me if I had been, you know, African American or something like that? First of all, it's weird that he asked you if you had crack on you. Cause that's like, I think that's like not even legal for them to be like, hey, do you have crack on you? Like, I don't think they're supposed to, but, um, then for him to ask you for a condom. Did he ever explain why he wanted... I, I can tell you why he wanted a condom. Here's why. Listen to this. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. You know, a fighter the other day at UFC said he's going to come on his ass. Listen. Fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. I'm coming on your ass. 
You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. Smile. If, if you were cutting a promo, Tommy, would you ever say, the guy literally said, I'm coming on your ass. I don't know. I would never use that. It was weird, right? I mean, so why would, do you ever find out why the cop asked you for a condom or like what, what in the world? Oh, no, that I did about? not. I never found out this. You know, I, I told my family about it. I told my friends about this, but I, I, I don't know if the cop was, I haven't seen him and I haven't seen the guy in forever. You know, I haven't seen him in a while. So. so it's weird. It was really weird. That, that happened. Weird. I've never had an experience like that with a police officer. Well, and ever since then, the cops that actually like me around here in Black Mountain, so they 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 treat me pretty nicely. They don't say anything to me. Did you ever tell the other yeah. cops? Like, you know, one of your cops was asking me if I had a condom. No, not really. I haven't asked, and I thought about asking. I'm I'm like, did you guys ever have a case come up on me where the guy was like uh, asking me weird questions if I had a condom on me? I'm like, no, I haven't asked them. Oh my! No, you can't because they wouldn't even believe you. They'd be like, you're fucking crazy. Like they wouldn't even believe you. You know, you would have had to go that night to the police station and be like, yo, your cops ask me if I have a condom. When the cop asked you if you had a condom, Tommy, and I know we've been over this years ago, like five, six years ago, I monetized this or something. But when the cop asked you if you had a condom, I mean, did you ever, did you say anything like back? Like, why? I said, no, sir. No, no, sir. I, I, I just said, no, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. Like that. That's how I was. He asked to see my ID. I handed him my ID. And technically people say, you know, if you want to be rebellious, you don't show them your ID. But like, I was just like, always told to listen po to police officers if they ask you a question. I wasn't like born in the era where, you know, social justice warrior, don't give the cops your information. You know, like I've always been like, you give a cop your ID if they ask you for their, your ID. Yeah, but like, do you that's know how strange it is that he asked you for a condom? I mean, that's weird. Like th there's no crime in having a condom. So where the hell in the world did that come from? He almost sounds like he wanted to rape you. And he was like, I hope you have a condom because I'm going to penetrate you, son. I don't know. It was really strange. Like, you know, that's really the strange. only situation I really had with a cop. The, a, 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 a unpleasant situation. That, another situation I had with a cop, but it wasn't bad, actually. It was actually really good. I was walking around Black Mountain, and there was this um, business that had dogs. They had uh, guard dogs. Well, apparently the guard <laughs> dog got <laughs> out, and no one was there to take the dog back. Well, as I'm walking, I hear... You know, row, 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 row. I turn around and there's a <laughs> big fucking dog looking at me and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm like frozen with fear. And then I hear whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm like, I look around, there's a cop. He's like, Tommy, just walk slowly. Just walk slowly back to me. And he like walked towards the dog and like he pulled out his taser and like was, Jesus. you know, so technically, if that cop hadn't been there, I probably would have been mauled to death. Probably. Wow, that's crazy, man. And the, I thought I thought you were saying the like the insane clown posse showed up. No, no, a cop like a a cop showed up no. and uh, he the, saved my ooh, life. That, thing. that dog would have probably that dog would have probably mauled me to death. Probably would have nibbled on your giblets. Um, <laughs> you know, and and you know the other thing about that Tommy is um, with uh, going back to Chester, who's out of control right now. Chester is just running rough shot everywhere um we had heard one of the complaints from debe when she was there was how he looked at her s child and um so i think that chester is starting to that's something i saw in the chat so chester's really starting to build this reputation i think pretty soon chester will be on the fbi's most wanted i think he's starting to develop a reputation for murdering molesting and um all kinds of things. And I know that people are looking for Chester everywhere. The the police are worried about him. Um, and <laughs> I don't know where he is. He's like, he he's, uh, he's out there somewhere, you know, he's like Pennywise, except for he doesn't bite little kids. He does something. something no, I don't else. think he rapes kids. I, I, I think he I just tortures people. Oh, oh God. You don't think so? <laughs> He apparently, I went on my Twitter today, and apparently he said something to you today. Apparently, well, well, he would send a message to you. Well, I actually played that earlier, and that was one of the very interesting parts of the tweet that 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 uh, Chester sent me. 
hours ago. Uh, this was sent to me by Chester. And um, this is one of the interesting parts here towards the end where he, I think he's hungry for my kids. And you'll see it at the end here. Her makeup so she could be. Oh, see, right. Oh, my God. Right there. That's disgusting, Chester. You sick bastard. And um, he said something about, and, and, you know, Drew's been afraid for his, his daughter. And like, here it is. Look, right. And I want to know when our makeup says so she could be. <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> but you too <laughs> and I want to know when our makeup session could be <laughs> oh. session could well Joe I'll let you get back to your review man but you have a good night okay Tommy you know what we really reviewed all we could we've been doing it for hours I'm ready to chill with you just let's just me and you let's just let's just turn this into Tommy and Joe make love Right. I, I I can't, Joe. I, I I'm gonna. I gotta work tomorrow. I gotta go to bed, so I gotta jump off here. But at some point, we will do honestly. Okay. We are gonna record honestly, Tommy. Me and you. And Tommy well, is no Tommy definitely. is Tommy is no liar. He's going. He, all right, everybody, don't say that. He had a bad night the other night. Tommy, your video was concerning for people. The when you're gonna be on monetize this, and then people were like. He was out of his mind in that video. Like you, you were really. It was that energy drink. Real. You never drink an energy drink again, dude. No, I'm never gonna drink an energy drink ever again. It was like crack. I mean, did did someone bring you it? Because I wondered if like did someone put a speed ball or something like or I don't know something. No, it was it was already closed. I, I what happened was I think I shot it back. I, I kind of I chugged it. I, I chugged the energy drink, and that was a bad thing for me to do because I did it all one sitting. I did a, that energy. I took two or three sips, and then bam, I hit it back. Like I chugged it. Damn man, you did hit it back. It was crazy. Well, Tommy, maybe we'll either see Tommy on honestly or maybe on monetize this at some point. He'll be back. I'm sure he's feeling way better. You look great, and you got you escaped Chester. Old Tommy wouldn't have been able to do that. He would have been out of shape, out of weight, whatever the case is. Um, and Tommy, what would you do if the protesters were walking by your place? Would you go out there and march with them? Uh, no, I just keep to myself. Honestly, I wouldn't even go out there because, like, I think that um, this. I think that. Well, I think people have a right to speak for what they want to speak for. You know, like I, I'm not against uh, Black Lives Matter. You know, like. That's, you know, they're protesting for a reason, but the rioting is really wrong. That's not sending a message. That's not bringing back. That's not going to bring back him. Okay. That's, that's do it. Breaking down, setting cop cars on fire and, you know, setting fast food restaurants on fire and like Wendy, destroying Wendy's. things. That's not doing a difference, folks. You're not doing a difference by doing that shit. All you're doing is destroying your community. That's all you're doing, honestly. That's all you're doing, folks. You need to stop this. Like, like I understand protesting, but rioting, like, you're not doing a service to anybody. Well, and, you know, the other thing about it is um, when, the, when, the, when the Wendy's was on fire, that must have broke your heart. That's one of your favorite places to eat. <laughs> No, I think it's ridiculous that they would destroy a, a business like that. It has nothing to do with this whole entire situation. Yeah, Tommy, I mean, I can definitely understand the outrage and the anger you have about the establishments being destroyed. No doubt about it, you are upset. Well, you know, here's the thing. We've been in this situation with COVID, and these places have been shut down, and now this happens – and now they're deciding, oh, we're just going to burn buildings down because we can, you know, because we're, we're, you know, and it's not even the right. It's not even the people that are protesting. It's undercover police officers that are doing this shit. And somebody is covering it up. Somebody is covering up these undercover police officers and they need to be brought to justice. Like, this is ridiculous. Tommy, um. Would would you say you're as mad about the uh, black people being targeted by police, or more mad the Wendy's is burning down? I think I'm mad that the police are going after black people. You know, like I, I like I, I think that it's it's wrong, and that uh, you know there there needs to be it needs people need to be treated equally. You know, if if a if a cop pulls over 
you know, like say if I was driving or you were driving, you know, all we do is get a pass. But if a black guy gets pulled over, it's more or less they, it seems like an officer turns on that switch and it's like, it's that interesting switch uh, that they turn on. And it's like, don't, don't say switch. I'm just kidding. Um, no. Um, yeah. I've, you know, I've, I've been pulled over uh, probably 14 times in my life and I received a ticket about seven or eight of those times. One time they gave me a three hundred and fifty dollar fucking ticket. It was crazy. I got a ticket one time uh, from not wearing my seatbelt. A hundred and fifty dollar ticket. Wow! And I got it waved. I got it waved uh, from my friend that her son was a lawyer. <laughs> you privileged piece of garbage. You're more mad about <laughs> Wendy's than the problem. No, I'm just kidding. No, but yeah, it did melt your heart when you saw that Wendy's burn. It melted mine too. I get it, Tommy. I'm I'm there with you, man. We'll talk about it more on honestly and whenever we whenever we hook up during the week. There's no promises. We just kind of fly by the day, you know. It's Tommy around. Hey, what's up? There's no plans really for anything except for the you know when you announced you're going to be on monetize this. That's why so many people were messaging you because they were like, oh no. But but then I had a lot of people who watched your video earlier that day because I made a tweet that was like Tommy's not coming, and people were like, dude, go watch his video. You'll see why he's not coming. And I did, and I was like, oh man. That was rough. Like you needed to go to bed like immediately. Like and just sleep it off and I did. I slept it off. It was hard for me to sleep because the energy was so high. It's like with that kind of you're trying to fight that energy. So like I was trying to do my best to sleep through that and just to get that, you know, get knock myself out, make myself fall asleep, honestly. Would you go would you think about becoming a cop, uh, Tommy? Ever? Nah, I, I, I don't think I could be. I don't. I don't think I could be a cop. I, I can't drive. You have to be able to drive to be a cop. That's what you think. No, you could be one of those bicycle cops that just bicycles themselves around, you know, and just bicycle after people. And wh- honestly, like I, I don't think I, I don't think I'd be a very good cop. I'd let everybody off with warnings and stuff like that, and I wouldn't be aggressive really. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, you would. Uh, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, you'd just be too nice. And you get fired. They'd be like, you didn't even arrest anybody in the last seven months. What are you doing? And you'd get thrown off. Hey, what energy drink was it that sent you straight I really, I can't remember what energy drink it really was. It was just, it was, it had a black, it had a, it was, it was black and green. It was black? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Was, uh-huh. it, was it amped? Like energy amped? Or like, when you said green, now, a monster? Was it a monster? No, it wasn't. It, I can't remember what what kind of monster drink. I don't know what drink it was exactly. I know it was an energy. Because if your heart explodes anytime soon, I want to know who to sue. <laughs> you know what well, I, mean? I think. I, you know, I think more or less, like my parents would sue. You know, they would probably yeah, sue. They may not know what happened, so I may. I would have been reaching out to them to be like, "Hey, you guys should sue," because Tommy said he drank such and such energy drink, then started acting crazy. And then, like, seven hours later, your heart explodes. Like, so, I mean, we want to know, you know what I mean? That's what I would be doing. I'd be hitting up your parents, like, to get revenge for you when it came to that. Ridiculous. But, uh, all right, you going to Betty by, I guess? Hey, man, you have a good night, okay? All right, go get some sleepy, and I'll see you pee-pee. Yeah, good night. All right, tell Chester. Look out for Chester. He's molesting everybody out there. He's climbing in your window. He's molesting everybody out there, especially if they're underage. Super Jack. <laughs> Super Jack. <laughs> Tommy's face was like... China was already icy, champ, right? Yes. Screw Charlotte. <laughs> she beat Double J, Jeff Jarrett. The J to the J to the A double R, blah, 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 blah. Drew Bar, thank you for the donation, man. What's up, dude? What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. Top donator. Okay, bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, Jason Tarr. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. <laughs> Woo. So you crackers tried to lynch my black brother the dream even though that chocolate covered ass pirate is a dick gobbler and Tommy <laughs> Mommy is a honky lesbian. Oh my god. AJ the race is that honky. Um I mean I don't want to do any of that, but I think Tommy's family would do that. 769 is on the phone. Hello, 769. Hey Joe Cronin, what's good, man? What's up, dude? I have a question. It's not about the pay-per-view, but if you was a movie writer and you had Rob Van Dam and Matt Riddle in the same movie, what would it be about? Rob Van Dam and Matt Riddle? And Matt Riddle. 
I would make it about some kind of disagreement the wrestlers had or one of them was a murderer outside of wrestling and killed his wife and then was killing other people and they were both in the same wrestling organization similar to ECW and Matt Riddle was the bad guy and Rob Van Dam well I guess Rob Van Dam would be the bad guy now because he's the old guy so I guess Rob Van Dam be the bad guy and Matt Riddle would be the young up and coming cop who on the side was a wrestler and he started investigating Rob Van Dam and Rob Van Dam was friends with some of the other wrestlers. They were like the foot soldiers and he kicked their ass and make his way through the ranks to find uh, where this guy would, uh, tr would be actually trafficking woman wrestlers that would sign up to the wrestling uh, club or whatever and to be trained. But eventually they would, sometimes they would go missing and he was running a, 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 some kind of trafficking thing. And so he had to kick their ass and then eventually it ended in Tokyo. It'd be amazing. You made theater right on the spot, didn't you? <laughs> I made what? As you made up that whole plot right on the spot, didn't you? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> see you later, Joe. Thanks, man. I'll see you, bro. <laughs> hey, yeah. He, he asked. I mean, there, there's my movie. Let's do it. <laughs> That'd be fucking awesome. I'd watch that movie. RVD versus Matt Riddle, you know, and, and, and you know, they, they would be some weed. They'd be smoking. And every scene with Rob Van Dam as the bad guy being like, go get her. Get her and sell her to the, to the Japanese. Sell her to the Japanese. Now, like that'd be Rob Van Dam smoking weed in the, like in the segments where he was the bad guy. It'd be amazing. Amazing show. What else we got? Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. That's Want it. some bubbly? Look at this stuff. Oh, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. That's it. A little bit. Yes. 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 Ayoshirai is the champion. I would eat her Japanese teriyaki ass out real good and gobble it all up nom nom nom. What's up Tommy and Joe hope you'll have a good one. Bravo. Wensi loves you Tommy. Uh, thank you so much um, Randy Viper. I appreciate it bro. Absolutely. Yes dude a lot of people do copy me and what are you going to do about it dude. I don't know why you keep bringing that up. Who cares. Let people copy or let people do things I did five years ago all day. Who cares. Shut up. You're banned. Tiger Blood, Jake the Snake. You want Jake the Snake to do it? Oh, dude, it would be so good if Jake the Snake was like one of the one of the bad guys. He, you know, Jake the Snake is the one in charge of abducting the girls and bringing them to Rob Van Dam. And he's like, I got another one. She lives on Park Ave. I know. I have a German buyer that would suck fucking fondle her. He would pay half a million for her pussy. All right. And then Rob Van Dam's like, go ahead and we'll go ahead and make it happen. I'm busy. Like, and, and then Jake brings her the girl. Oh, it would be a great movie. It'd be one of the best damn movies that you ever seen in your life, son. Absolutely. But yeah. Bring it on, brother. You got that smile in your eye for smiley, smiley pies. <coughs> yeah, man, it's been a crazy day. It's been a crazy day, a crazy night. It's been a wild time. Me and my wife are recording our next episode. We're going to be recording our next episode. I do have Leah coming back till death do us podcast. Uh, so we do have that. Those questions will be posted in a little bit on Patreon, so you guys can you know ask questions, whatever. I don't know what episode we're on. Twenty. I don't fucking remember what episode of uh, "To Death to Us" podcast. But um, I'm sure I. I'm sure it's fucking. We'll figure it out. Nineteen twenty. It's me, Jake Roberts. I'm gonna eat your asshole out. I'm gonna eat your fucking asshole out right now. Please, please let me. Please let me eat you. I want to eat you and suck you off. I'm going to suck everybody off. All right, here we go. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thank you, Randy Viper. 
So far, we got um, Jason Tarr keeping my shows alive as the top donator of the stream. 339-226-6610. The Discord is open to jump into the on-hold section if you guys want to come on and talk about some shit. Come on in. Let's have some fun if you'd like to. What's up to the chat? What did you guys think of In Your House tonight? We pretty much reviewed just about everything when it comes to it. Very disappointed in Adam Cole and Velveteen Dream's match. Man, I thought there would be something a lot more to that 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 back backstage brawl or whatever. But dude, I thought I think Gold Dust and Roddy Piper was a thousand times better than that. I thought maybe it would at least get on a map next to it. And we really didn't see that at all. I thought it was a like a shockingly wasted opportunity, man. It really was. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. Um, Ryback and Jake discuss prices. That's not a bad idea. Jake Roberts as rapist number five in CSI. Yeah, he could be on CSI, man. Imagine that. He would be a good CSI bad guy character. He could do it, too. I'm surprised he never got into acting. Jake the Snake is actually at the age right now where he would play a great, like, sick villain in an episode of, like, CSI or Law & Order. You're right. I'm surprised that hasn't happened. He'd be great. Man, I'm just an old man. I retired 10 years ago. I just want to be left alone. And in the end, he's, like, diddling people. I love the smell of them. I love the smell of them. How could you do that to my son? You were supposed uh, You were supposed to be the you were supposed to teach him you were supposed to be his uh his grandfather. I am his grandfather. Why did you do that to him? I love Dick. Oh my god, it would be just I love the smell. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't help it when I look at them. I love the smell of them. Oh my god, dude, he would be so sick. It would be so good, dude. It really would. Oh my god, dude. It would be so funny. It'd be great. Jake the Sick Roberts. Let me grab a drink here as I transition this, baby. We got more. So let me just grab my drink real quick. And while I grab my drink, let's all just calm down. And remember this. End the fuck over. Um, um, but no, he still didn't want to do that. Yeah, because <laughs> nothing he was saying was logical. Oh my god, I'm crying Spaz right Phoenix. JD would be Ryback's prison wife. <laughs> oh my god. Get down. Shut up. What are you doing, bro? What are you doing to me, bro? Shut the fuck up. Shut your mouth. What's your name? <laughs> Wait, tell me what's your name. Uh, my name is JD. I'm shut the fuck up. But you told me. Shut up. Bend over. I want you to bend the fuck over. <laughs> um, uh, my, my cat's on my lap, though. I don't want to bend over. Shut up and bend over. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Oh my god, my ass, my ass, my ass, what are you doing to my ass? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, shell shock. Finish it. <laughs> oh my god, don't finish it, please don't finish it. I'm gonna finish it. Oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god. I'm gonna fucking die right now. Oh my god. Good god, man. Good god. You know, Jake, you really are you really are sometimes pretty sick, Jake, you know, to be honest. It's I don't know what I don't know what the problem is, but it's very strange. And I don't think a whole lot of people like it, to be honest. It's very strange. She lived down the street 
always down there. We were in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, I said, uh, well, shit, she she gave me $300 to sleep with her. I could borrow money from her. Not to not to not to have sex with her, but she'd give me money. <laughs> then I started thinking about the snake. As he walked in on Pat Patterson, jacking <laughs> off a kid. She lived down the street, always down there. We were in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh <laughs> I said, uh well shit, she she gave me three hundred dollars to sleep with her. I could borrow Do you guys remember when I called when I prank called the library? So a, a long time ago, I prank called the library as Jake Roberts. And I swear to God, the librarian immediately, just for no reason, was like, uh, can I put you on hold? And, and she goes, thanks. And I'm like, okay. And she puts the phone down for like two seconds. And then we heard a noise like, <laughs> and it was like, Ugh. and she came right back and she was like, okay, hello. And I was like, dude, she just farted into the, like, but I heard it. Like, so it was the weirdest thing. Anybody that didn't hear that, here it is. In library, can you hold? Yeah, I can hold, absolutely. Thank you. Uh. I may help you. Like, dude, what was that? That's her phone. Library, can you hold? Yeah, I can hold, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Uh. I may help you. Whoa, did you... Uh... Somebody let one go. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Oh, hello. No, I'm here. I don't know why she hung up on me like that. Because she goes, hey, and I go, someone let one go. Like, why didn't she just say, uh -huh. anyway, um, what can I help you with? Like, why was she so like, huh, have a good day? Like, what was, the, what was that about? It sounds like she got angry that I called it out. Because why would you hang up on someone like that? She, it's like it's not like we've been pranking her all day or something. It was a single prank. In library, can you hold? Yeah, I can hold absolutely. Thank you. Ah. Uh, I may help you. Whoa! Did you uh, somebody let one go? <laughs> Have a good day. Bye bye. Oh, hello. No, I'm here. Oh wait, hello. What the fuck? You fart and then you hang up. <laughs> Dude, she hung up on me. Oh, she lived down the street, always down there. We were in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, the fuck? I said, uh, well, shit, she she gave me three hundred dollars to sleep with her. I could borrow money from her not to not to not to have sex with her, but she'd give me money. <laughs> then I started thinking about the snake. Brad, I started thinking about Damien. And I swear <laughs> to God to you, if I didn't fucking like a bitch, like a baby, I started crying. Ah, damn it, Jake, I started. <laughs> I mean, Brett. I don't even know who I am. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> I, for I forgot who I was doing. I started. I mean, Brett. I don't even know who I am. I started crying. Ah, damn it, Jake. I started. I mean, Brett. I don't even know who I am. I, for I forgot who I was doing. I don't even know who I am anymore. I started crying like a baby while I was... Well, I was jacking all over this thing. Does anybody <laughs> really right know who they are? <laughs> Vince McMahon, you will be. But I'll tell you, it sure smelled like a woman. Now we're at the bar, and Vince caught me one night, and I spilled the beans, and I straight up, I told him that I would, I would make Damien swallow my dick. <laughs> and that's the only reason straight up I told him that I would I would make Damien swallow my dick <laughs> and that's the only reason Vince otherwise he never would have cared he never would have taken Damien away from me <laughs> and I spilled the beans and I straight up 
I told him that I would I would make Damien swallow my dick. <laughs> and that's the only reason Vince otherwise he never would have cared. He never would have taken Damien away from me. <laughs> but that is the hell that is my life. <laughs> A few Oh my god, dude. But that is the hell that is my life. Oh, man. Good old Jake Roberts. I can never get enough of Jake, man. He's always good. No matter what. Jake always delivers, man. Jake Jake Roberts, that is. That's one of the best interviews with Jake Roberts, god damn it, ever I ever heard. Everybody touts how good his interviews and things are. That was one of the best ones I ever heard. Oh, no doubt about it, it was animal abuse that he was, you know, dropping animal abuse. We got a, a voicemail from Jake Roberts. You know that? So this. Hi. Hi, Joe. It's me. I told you that I would leave you a voicemail. And I told you that I was going to shock the wrestling world. And I told you that I'd be going somewhere big to do big things. Yep. Now I know that you got upset at me because I didn't want to be on your podcast. But now you know the reason is because Jake the Snake Roberts is in AEW. <laughs> <sighs> and uh, when you find out who I'm bringing to AEW, heads are going to roll Dreams are going to die, and I am going to get what I want. Trust me. Wow. I mean, very ominous stuff. Like, we had lots of different messages from Jake the Snake, but, um, you know, just so many different ominous ones that uh, it was amazing. But tonight, right here, we're going to have to do something different. We're going to have to do something a little different tonight, baby. If it happens to him, it can happen to you. It can happen to anybody. So I want to say thank you to that. Black Lab is the asteroid on its way to Earth right now, coming towards us to end all of us. Jason Tarr is the top donator at $25. Bah. That is the highest donation. Jason Tarr. How you guys doing in the chat? Um, <coughs> let's see if we can get one here. Ryback. It's me, Ryback. Ryan Reeves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Do it up. Do me up. You guys want to do it up? You guys want to see me do something weird? You want to see me do something really fucking weird? Swear to God, I will. I swear to God, I will do it. What the fuck is going on? Oh. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. <laughs> I'm trying to get, I'm trying to call it, I'm trying to call it, man. It's not working. What the fuck is going wrong with this? Why does it sometimes it's working and then other nights it's not? What has happened? <laughs> what in the world is happening? I'm trying. I'm looking for it. I'm looking for it right now. God damn it. <clears throat> it's weird. I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm dying, dude.
Mm -hmm. Alright, let me see if I can fix this. I'm gonna try to fix the problem. Look at how much bigger Jake is than me, by the way. He's just a fucking... He's a massive dude. He's a big guy. He's a massive guy. He's got big arms. He got big hips. He got a big head. He's got a lot of big stuff. I wonder how... You know, how big is it? You know, down there. That's a great... That's a great point, man. Like, we haven't talked... We haven't figured that out yet. Oh, we haven't figured that out yet. How big it is, man. Ryback calls and Jake... They argue. Yeah, it'd be funny if they did that, man. And where are the where are the murder hornets, man? We've talked we've we've talked, uh, uh, you know, in your house, inside and out, man. That we don't need to. I, there's really nothing more to cover on it, to be honest. We talked about so much of it in your house tonight was a little bit lackluster, man. Six point five for me. That's a pretty low score for NXT, dude. This is very weird tonight. So it's very um, it's very down there a little bit. It's a little bit down, if you know what I'm saying. But uh yeah they um I don't know why I can't I can't get that shit to work dude. It worked the other day though. That's what's weird is it was working the other day and then I decided not to do it. But it was working. And I don't know what the uh what the answer to that is. And when you you know when you do the password reset and they don't send you the reset, isn't that the worst when it's like, "Oh, forgot your password, do a password reset." <laughs> and then you do a password reset and then you don't like you never get the email and you check your spam and you check everything and you never get the email and you're like okay and then it's like didn't work S send it again if it didn't work and then you hit send again and then you still don't see it and then like seven hours later you get like seven emails and you're like come on man um 507 what's going on man Hey, what's up? What's going on? How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm um, doing all right. I a little let down by in your house tonight, but it was pretty good. Yeah, I, yeah, I am too, man. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, what what you think about the carrying cross? I thought he looked good, man. I thought he looked strong and good and long down there. You know, I mean, we pretty much thought he was gonna just beat up Tommaso Ciampa. So that you could be like, wow, that guy just beat up Champa, who used to be a badass, like, and that guy just destroyed him. So yeah. pretty much got what we thought, what I thought out of that, and I thought he looked great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, um, I was just thinking, I was just kind of hoping, you know, it's just, I don't know. To me, the crowd kind of took it away when he was making his entrance, <laughs> but that's just my opinion. I heard guys like, you know, I just got done watching, you know, like, J.D., and he said he loves it, but to me, I, I don't know. I just, I kind of didn't like it, but that's just my opinion. I didn't really, well, I mean, I didn't like the show overall, really. I mean, I kind of did. It was all right. I thought it was, like, a 6 out of 10 tonight. I didn't, uh, I, yeah. Same, I, yeah, same here, same here. Yeah, I didn't think it was anything crazy tonight. I don't know how you could really love the shit out of this. It was, it was all right. But it really didn't feel like a takeover as much. But I know there's no crowd, so I know that that's going to be against them anyway. But just, I mean, dude, the back lot brawl that or whatever that didn't even that was not good at all. Like I'm sorry, like that was not. I can't find anybody who really thought that was good. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I just I don't know about it. It just felt. I can't. Remember, I don't know. To me, it just felt kind of. It's not know. you. It's not I, it's you because the whole chat five five hundred people earlier basically all thought the same thing. Yeah, it was just I don't know. It's hard <laughs> to put my finger on it. You know, I just I just thought it was wrong. I thought the decision was was right of, of keeping Adam Cole as a champion, but uh, I don't know the the match just didn't feel very. I don't know. Yeah, it was something off. I like that they had the commentary on it because I was like, yeah, dude, they need you know they need commentary on this stuff. You know, when they don't put commentary on it, it's not quite as good, so. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, same thing here, yeah. I was, like, hoping I'm, like, you know, usually, you know, like, you know with The Undertaker and with uh, AJ, too, you know, there was no commentary, but it was good, though, in my opinion. But uh, when they had commentary <laughs> on it, it gave it a little bit more, I guess you could say, life. 
I guess you could say. Yeah, it was better with the commentary, but it, it it wouldn't have been good no matter what. And if it had no commentary, it would have been really bad. So unfortunately, it just yeah. didn't work um, to me. Some I I actually kind of liked the last match the best. At first, I was like uh, halfway through it, I wasn't that into it. But by the end, I was like, all right, that was one of my favorite things. And probably Keith Lee and Gargano, I guess, were the next thing, and that's about it. And but nothing hit tonight really a hundred percent for me. It was it was all okay though. It was you know six anything above a six and up is is not bad. That's pretty good for me. But it's not you know it didn't blow us away. I I, I didn't even give it a seven. So. It's it landed in a yeah. six, so it, it is what it is. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I, I really thought that uh, the Johnny Gargano and um, Keith Lee match was pretty good. I I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was all right. It's okay. Good call, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I automatically knew. I was like, you know, with the key when you put the key in his tights, I'm like, <clears throat> when they, I thought they weren't going to use it, but I'm like, you got to use it, and then. Right when he put it into Keith Lee, you know, I thought, I thought that was it. That was it, you know. Yeah, when um, I I pretty much thought Keith Lee would win, but I was um, I was just surprised it was so long, and I don't think it ever con- connected for me a hundred percent. You know what I mean? Good call, man. I appreciate the call. Three three nine two two six sixty six ten. If you guys want to keep talking about wrestling or whatever, that's cool. If you guys want to be psychos, uh, let's do that too. Speaking of psychos, Tommy was on earlier and he was uh, defending his buddy uh, Chester there, and it was kind of weird, kind of strange stuff. Um, but while while we while we look at that, I got I'm gonna pee pee myself, and then I think uh, I'm gonna beat your mama in Warzone. In my basement. I swear to God, he said that on Twitter. Appropriate, because he, like, he, he said he was going to molest my kids. Oh, watch Tommy's face. He doesn't know what to do here when I say this, dude. He doesn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Pee pee poopy butt penis ass. Oh God, come on. Okay, what the? <laughs> F my relatives. <laughs> <laughs> F my relatives, dude. That dude, that guy's name is F my relatives. That's like one of the funniest goddamn names I've ever heard in my life. Oh my god, Tommy, thank God. He, guys, he's all right. Tommy's alive. Tommy's alive, everybody. Hey Joe. How you doing? You got away what from the- Chester the molester. I can't believe it, dude. Oh god. He's a fucking lunatic. Did he do it? I I, I sometimes don't know what he does. When I, well, he had me tied up in the closet over there. I just got out of the closet, and he's now gone. I don't know where he is. He's running off somewhere. But, my God, he, I hope he didn't say anything, dude. I hope he didn't say anything that was inappropriate. Cause, he said, like, he, was gonna I molest, he said he was going to molest my kids. <laughs> I, wow. Jeez, the guy's what? got personal problems, I swear. <laughs> like, I don't think... I don't think he molests people. I think he just uh, he tortures people. I don't no, think he's. I, I think I heard him. I think he said he's going to molest my kids, <laughs> and he hopes the cops take out one of the races. I don't know. I don't know about Chester, but that's just he's a he's a lunatic, dude. He's a he's out there. He is, man. Definitely some kind of racist pedophile, but that's okay because it is what it is. He's going around doing chaos everywhere. Chester, Tommy's. Former friend Chester, the mask wearer, grabbing kids, hating on Black Lives Matter. Just a absolute insanity from Chester, Tommy. Um, I, I agree. You should be scared of him. I don't know if he's racist. I don't think he's a child molester. I just think he's a clown that causes terror. I think he's just a terrorizer. I swear. I thought he said, I want black kids in my basement. I swear to God, he said that on Twitter and earlier. I don't know. Like uh, he's just a crazy <laughs> dude. He is crazy. But Tommy, man, I'm glad you got away. <laughs> Obviously, he let you go because you're white, or you'd be dead right now. So I am. Ha- thank, thank God you're white, Tommy. That's all I've got to say. Otherwise, and you're not five. If you were five and, and not white, you would be in pieces right now in a basement. So thank God you're okay. I love you. I'm so glad you're well, all right. I, I tell you what, I don't know if I, I you know, people have been talking about situations they've had with the police, but, you know, I had a situ. I don't know if I ever told you about that situation I had with a police officer once. About what 90 times. You? Well, 
Are you like the swatting that happened to you or something else? No, this was a while back ago. I was uh, coming, going to a gas station to get a candy bar or something like that. And I was coming back and I'm walking on the other side of the street and I hear whoop, 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 and I look over and it's a cop. And he's like, come here for a second, sir. And of course, this is the middle of the night. I'm wearing a black trench coat. And uh, I'm like, okay. And I, I go over there and he's like, uh, what you doing out here, son? I'm like, oh, I just went to the gas station to grab me a candy bar. That's all. He's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. What's up? And he's like, uh, first he starts asking me, do you have any crack on you, son? No. Do you have any crack on you? Do you have any drugs on you? No. And here's one of the biggest harebrained questions he is, asked me. Is this me. the condom story? Yes. He says, do you have any condoms on you? <laughs> the cop asked you if you had a condom. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, like, but I, I can say, yeah, and I'm, like, I'm saying, I legitimately think if I had been a different race, legitimately, he probably would have, like, slammed me up against his car or something like that. And, you know, who knows? Like, what, what would have happened to me if I had been, you know, African American or something like that? First of all, it's weird that he asked you if you had crack on you. Cause that's like, I think that's like not even legal for them to be like, hey, do you have crack on you? Like, I don't think they're supposed to, but, um, then for him to ask you for a condom. Did he ever explain why he wanted... I, I can tell you why he wanted a condom. Here's why. Listen to this. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. You know, a fighter the other day at UFC said he's going to come on his ass. Listen. Fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. <laughs> I'm coming for that ass. I'm coming on your ass. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, boy. I'm coming for that ass. Smile. If you were cutting a promo, Tommy, would you ever say the guy literally said, "I'm coming on your ass"? That's so weird, man. That's like one of the weirdest things, dude. I was I tweeted that I thought when I tweeted that yesterday uh, during UFC, I thought that tweet was gonna get like hundreds of retweets and stuff because it's just so weird, dude. It was just so weird. Yeah, Tommy, shut up. you're in Black Mountain. Yeah, they're harassing. They're harassing Tommy so much. Nate from VA. What's up, Nate? Holy shit, man. Yeah, Tommy doesn't know harassment. I'll show you some harassment. Come to Boston and come meet the uh, the Boston guys. They'll slap you around, throw you up against a brick wall and beat you. They'll beat the hell out of you, man. They'll beat the hell out of you in Boston. They will slap you around here, man. They will beat you up. They will slap you around, beat you up, drag you out, smash you in the head with a rock. Yeah, normally we do Sunday night gaming tonight, but obviously I didn't. Obviously WWE NXT had it in your house, so we, we were obviously doing the in your house deal. But um, yeah, we'll see, man. I hit up everybody about games, but uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't seen anything yet. But uh, we were talking to Famous B and Drew the other night on um, Corrupted Podcast, which is available on Patreon. Um, so go check that out. Thanks though, Matt. I appreciate it. I just, I was reading the email you just sent me. I was trying to read it while talking, which is always a difficult thing, but I'll check that out later, man. That's a, that's a cool email. I mean, the email is cool. I like the video. Uh, Capital Murder. What up, Capital Murder? How you doing, man? What's up, Joe? How you doing, dude? I've been in, on in a while. Yeah. Yeah, man. How, how you been? What's up? <laughs> yeah. Good. So, um, I sent you an email and you didn't respond to it. So, uh. I just been in my house crying for about two weeks over that. But other than that, my life's going pretty good. Uh, did you? Uh, Jake took off, didn't he? Yeah, Jake had to go, and um, okay, my yeah, I, I, I took a break for a second, and I was like, "Oh, he's probably streaming if he's still alive." But uh, I saw you took a call, so yeah. I mean, I know you pretty much covered the in your house thing, but one thing I was going to say about it, uh, I don't usually watch NXT actually. Like, I've tried to get into it, and which is weird because I like watched AEW from the start and. It's not that I'm against, it's just weird how, like, I grew up in Ruthless Aggression, kind of, like, I'm 28, so I'm, like, a little bit younger than you, so I kind of grew up, like, the era after you, but it's yeah. weird, it's, like, almost hard to get into, but I actually got to catch this one, and um, for someone who, basically from the perspective of someone who's not an NXT fan, I thought it'd be interesting to give mine, <laughs> and I kind of have the same, almost the same one as your guys, it seems like uh, it's good, but it seems like just, like, a good wrestling show, and not, like, a super memorable, or, like, um, it sounds corny to say, but like a 
like a entertainment or some kind of like revolutionary. That's not the right word. You know what I'm saying? Like well, a that's Stone the Cold, thing is Mike the... Tyson. There's no big moment that's going to make it memorable. Like we're not going to remember in your house from 2020, like in a year or two years from now. You know. Well, well the thing about it is normally NXT, 90 percent of the other NXTs are fire. Like you're like right. you end up coming out like wow that was fucking awesome, um, and this one was just more like all right here's a show and it's pretty good but that's about and, it and I do and I do know that the crowd has a part to play but I think that and I think you said it earlier that we can only blame so much on that like I think the takeovers like I've watched I haven't seen them but I've gone back and watched clips because I heard like what you just said people were so pumped about them I'm like I gotta check this out so the crowd is so fucking lit and pumped like it makes you think it's super important and like so that is a part of it so i'll give them a little bit of a break on that but even even imagine this exact card with the show i still think we'd be saying like oh, it, like we might have given it one more higher rating but it's still like just missing that one moment where we're like holy shit dude we got to find out what's going to happen this week like it, it doesn't have that moment kind of yeah yeah that's kind of how i feel man like i feel like it's like uh we're just missing something here tonight, you know. A lot of good, a lot of good matches. A lot of, um, you know, the stories are, you know, Triple H is behind it, so a lot of the stories are um, continuations and stuff are going well. But I just don't have that big like, oh, I can't miss NXT now because of, and like the old school like, and WWE main shows don't have that either. So I'm not. I hope nobody thinks that I'm saying they do. It's just I was kind of looking for some like WWF type feel. I mean, maybe because it was called in your house, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I think Triple H, do you think he's the one behind trying to bring these nostalgic stuff back? It's got to be, right? Oh, yeah, those guys, yeah, I think it's them. Like, hey, you know, it'd be cool, like, let's bring back, like, in your house. Or let's, let's do something, yeah. Yeah, like, they're sitting around taking bong hits, and they're like, hey, man, let's bring back, uh, you know, I can see that happening. Yeah, I think I think it's, I definitely think it's probably one of them. I mean, you don't know who his idea it really was, but it's probably Triple H. But it had to be approved well, by him anyway, so he... Well, and Road Dogg, well, Road Dogg and Sean, so it's a lot of the late 90s yeah. guys that are behind NXT. Could have been Road Dogg, could have been Sean, could have been... Yeah, anybody could have just thrown out, like, dude, you know what you should do is bring back in your house. The people have always asked about that or said something about that. We should... We got the set, right? Like, we could just do a little... Yeah, yeah. Nostalgia thing. And, dude, I, 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 prime, I swear to God, like, my hand to God, I'm not saying this, like, to ride your dick, but they need a fucking commentator even if it, it should it'd be sweet if it was you but even if it wasn't it's like not just a heel but like a heel that progresses you and jake covered this a little while ago a little bit but the yeah. progressive storylines like just like man like if they could like pipe you in over it like have you send in the tape of you doing it or something i mean it'd just be so like they're just missing that little that even that little thing that right there might have made the show more memorable like yeah just having a heel i know you bring it up be... a lot but man they're just like kind of calling it and like Bernal gets excited and I get it's cool but there's no like prick on the t at the table like you know what I mean well I think it'd be good too with Tom Phillips because I think Tom Phillips would be the guy who mostly reacted to the heel guy and Morrow just called the yeah, stuff yep. and I think that could work but yeah like tonight with Jake was saying the cab and then you know ha instead mm -hmm. of just burying the guy like you know oh he's trying to escape you know to have that heel to be like yeah he's not trying to escape he's got a plan obviously and then have the face say like yep. well yep. it's well, it didn't work, obviously, because uh, this that type of stuff would be much more interesting. It's, so yeah, it's such, a, it's such a little thing that they could do. It's almost infuriating that they don't. And one more question I had for you. Uh, I'll let you go, Joe. Um, but uh, what do you think about? I know you kind of said like Charlotte's run overall. Are you against like them trying something like that in the future? Do you think it was? Because I don't hate on it as much as everyone else. I think that whether you like it, or, whether you like it or not, the decision to do it, you have to admit that it did bring a little bit of clout to the division, whether you like her or not, um, you know, that <laughs> level of even the name just itself kind of, I mean, do you think that idea would work in the future? Or is it just kind of a uh, lame to bring these, these bigger people down? I thought it would have been okay to bring her in. I'm surprised they put a belt on her is the only thing, but you know, yeah, besides that, that I, I thought she would lose at mania, honestly. Yeah, we all kind of thought that mania loss was coming, so that was weird. But in the end, I guess I didn't mind it as much, you know, because it did end up working out, I guess. There's a lot of hate online about that. Like, she got, like, the vicious, like, not really her personally, but just the idea of bringing the, quote, you know, main roster people, I don't even like that term really, but bringing them down. Like, it worked with Sin Bala really well. Maybe it's because of his style and he's a smaller guy, but uh, I just was wondering what you thought about trying to do that because they're obviously – even though they don't talk about it, they're trying to, they want, they're fucking mad about these AEW numbers beating them, no matter what anybody says, you know, fucking they're mad as fuck about 
losing to them. So yeah. they're going to try something. I just didn't know what you thought about I that. I think you're right. I think Triple H is probably like pissed because Vince is like, you guys can't even beat the new AEW. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. sure. You, you know Vince is driving them probably like at dinner. Like they're like, Triple H, Paul, you can't even beat fucking Cody Rhodes in his room. You know what I mean? You know he's driving <laughs> the shit out of them. Like, Oh, like, man, it's got to be pissing them off, dude. He's like, You hey, know he's uh, roasting the shit out of them. Like they're sitting at the pool like, yeah, Stephanie, can you believe your man can't even can't even fucking beat these new this football players or whatever? They're you know you, you know Vince <laughs> is talking mad shit about it. You just yeah. know Triple H probably wants to fucking kill himself. But but I'll let you go, Joe. I don't want to stay on too long. But it's good to talk to you. I haven't talked to you in a while. But uh, yeah, yeah answer my email so I can get back out of my house. Or I've been pretty sad about it. But, oh yeah, man, I'll look for your email because yeah, I do remember. I, no, think I, I think I did read it. I think I just didn't reply to it. No, yet, that's but. right. I'm just giving you shit, buddy. But I know you probably get a bunch of them. But uh, right on, dude. Thanks for having me on. All right, I'll call oh, back. Oh yeah, soon. baby. All right, sweet. I'll read your email though. I do remember I read. I think I read it and then I was like, "Let me think about that," and then I forgot about it. So I just got to reread it. Is all. But uh, yeah, man, much appreciated. Much appreciated, to all you guys. I think we covered everything we could cover. Um, you know. Hope everybody had a great night tonight. Pretty quiet night. Weird night over here. I don't know what the fuck's going on Sunday night, but it's a uh, bizarre. Um, but thank you to everybody who was donating. Uh, earlier today in your house and of course uh black lab is the asteroid coming for earth after friday night's monetize this and remember we had famous b on corrupted podcast he debuted his new song his song on corrupted podcast famous b from lucha underground famous fucking b dude debuted his song you can hear the entire song we played it it was crazy on Corrupted Podcast on Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. <coughs> Normally on Sundays, it's Sunday Night Gaming. But tonight we did uh, the WWE, obviously, because uh, In Your House was tonight. Had a lot of fun. Shout out to Jason Tarr, who was the t uh, largest donation of the night and is going to take home that JCS Digital Championship. Man, we've been doing this eight years now on YouTube. It's crazy. From monetize this to all the fun we've had all the years and everything we've done, man, it's, it's been wild. And um, we'll see if we can keep it going or not. But um, it's been crazy. Jason Tara, thank you, man. Uh, check out Patreon if you guys want to. And listen to the full thing of Famous B song. We'll have it up. And everybody else, you have a good night. And I will see you tomorrow for the Monday Night Raw review right back here. And uh, probably put up a couple videos during the day. I don't know what we'll talk about, but whatever the news is and whatever else things are, we'll, we'll talk about them there too. And then um, me and Leah uh, will have Till Death Do Us podcast, me and my wife's podcast. We'll be up on Patreon soon as well. We'll have the questions up uh, tonight or a little bit later, I think, or tomorrow afternoon. So look for that and post a question below it. We'll get to your question on that show. And um, that's about it. Fly fresher than a bar zest. Yes, balling got you hanging out. The famous B. Told you now, I bet you motherfuckers wanna slap. Pop champagne like the finals and you swept. Don't fire cream, make one need a grave for your death. Hey, cocky, but I feel I'm the best. Hey, cocky, but I feel I'm the best. Hey, cocky, but I feel I'm the best. Kevin Hart, if you disagree, then say it with your chest. Hey, cocky, but I feel I'm the best. Hey, cocky, but I feel I'm the best. Cocky, but I feel I'm the best. Kevin Hart, if you disagree, then say it with your chest. Uh, I ain't cocky, but you little niggas copy. Uh, Fuck a cheesecake, I wouldn't send you get me coffee. Famous B. Rich snowman, got my fucking knuckle frosty. Famous Richest B. Nigga up in the industry, no matter what it costs me. Drop I'm a fall till I'm face down on the coffee. Table from the shots fired by the squad if they caught me. Knock on wood like these bad bitches if they caught me. I'm so on, niggas jealous, now a pussy wanna off me. Oh. I'm the reason rappers need to get another hobby. I'm a star. You better win your fight, cause UFO I'm coming on your ass, bro. I'm coming for that ass. I really, I want to find you and I want to take a porcupine and jam it up your ass. You ridiculous piece of shit. You better win your fight because I'm coming on your ass, bro. I'm coming for that ass. This smells like my vagina. It's in there going out for some hangings. And fuck Bill Goldberg! This was the Joe Cronin Show.
Good night, everybody. Hit that like button. WWE or AEWN. Tune in to the Joe Cronin Show live, live, live on YouTube for review and reaction. Joe Cronin and Jake break down all the action. All of it. The Joe Cronin Show, your source for wrestling opinions, news, and insanity. A wrestling podcast. With attitude, mature audiences only. Join our community of over 70,000 people. Subscribe free on YouTube to The Joe Cronin Show.